Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Calyx. So glad to have you here with us tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So uh, the Calyx is a role-playing game show. Tonight we're playing Call of Cthulhu. I have four incredible guests about to join. Uh, so happy to have everybody here. We're streaming both to Twitch and to YouTube. So um, thanks, thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part. All right. Without further ado, let's introduce our incredible guests coming up. We have Gina DeVivo playing Ms. Evelyn Ward. Hey, Gina. Hello. Ooh, already in character. I'm ready to go. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Evelyn is an interesting bird. Can you tell us a little bit about her? Well, Evelyn is sort of having a, a, a quite a moment. Um, this is probably the longest she's ever been out of the house at any given time since she was quite a young, small child. Um, and, you know, she usually likes to stay around her books and, and solve sort of mysteries from, from the quiet and safety of her home. But sometimes when those mysteries are a little too titillating, she does the wrong thing and clearly goes outside and then is attacked by a tiny thing. Anyway... They are. All right. Uh, yeah, she's definitely had quite a time of it this time around. Yeah. And we'll get into exactly what happened on our first episode. Thanks to anybody who checked out our little recap video. Um, Gina, so glad to have you here. Great to be here. Hey. All right. Let's bring on to the broadcast a certain dilettante socialite that knows her way around high society as well as a weapon we have. Eloise Dorman. Oh, you couldn't be talking about me. Um, mwah, mwah. Hello, Evelyn. Um, mwah, um, mwah, mwah. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Played by Ms. Whitney Moore. Hello. <laughs> so glad to have you back. Me. Thank you so much for having me back. I just feel so, I just feel so grateful to walk amongst the people, you know, and see my dear friend Evelyn again. <laughs> You're looking radiant. Thank you, I know. <laughs> and uh, how how is Eloise doing with all of the blood that she's seen? Because we know she has a deep-seated fear of blood. Well, my unshakable confidence is somewhat shook. I don't know why I have a southern accent all of a sudden. Uh, I did see quite a bit of blood, yes. And um, you know, that is one thing that money just can't solve. So we will keep our chin up that's excellent what we'll do love it all right uh let's bring in uh another one of our players the very perceptive very persuasive and very afraid of straight jackets ruth bleaker played by amy dallin it's not fear if you just you know had some bad experiences you know what you know what we can get into that another time Ruth Bleaker, P.I., uh, I like to get to the bottom of things. I like to get my hands dirty. I don't usually like to get my hands, oh, chomped on. Uh, but, you know, you go where the mystery takes you. And while I don't have a lot of use for well-to-do folks most of the time, Eloise is all right. And this kid and her brother, uh, whose home these eggs landed in, they're all right, too. So, so if we can get through all of this, I have... I have a good feeling about it. That's a big admission for Ruth to be a fan of those in the aristocracy. I wouldn't okay. say that I'm not used to it, but Ruth, I am just such a fan of yours as well. I love being on this adventure, even though I don't really have much to do. I am just, I'm, I'm the only one that doesn't have a job except for moral support and lots of money. And I think that that's- And a gun. And a gun. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> I would strongly disagree. Uh, a dilettante <laughs> has a very important purpose, uh, especially if she knows her way around a rifle. Now, speaking of purpose, there is another character here. That would be the journalist working for the paper, working for her story, trying on many potential titles and looking for just the right one. We have Steph Woodbird playing Abigail Formosa. Oh, hello there. How are you all? It's so good to see you again. I almost <laughs> forgot what the voice was. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's right there. You betcha. Don't you know. Did you talk I wrote it down. In this voice? Oh, yeah. 
You wrote your catchphrases down? Oh, you betcha. Right at the top of me page. <laughs> Are you going to save any back or should we go through them now? Oh, no. I'll, I'll just put them in there where I see fit. <laughs> like a baby in a bathtub, eh? Oh, like a baby <laughs> in a bathtub. Oh, for cute. Feel a pig before you put it in the pit. Oh, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Are those on there? No. No, not all of those. I don't, wait, what? I'll add it. Those are definitely clutch Minnesotan phrases. So oh, yeah, I you're add. coming up near there. All right. Let's give our viewers at home a recap of what happened last week. If I forget anything, please, ladies, jump on in. So we start with the dilettante Eloise Dorman getting a telegram from an old friend, Enid Carrington. Enid has a beautiful estate, a property she is building up. It's going to be a brand new mansion. And there was some trouble in the building. The construction site was tampered with, vandalized, some might say. Her beautiful marble fountain was scandalized. I don't know. What else rhymes with eyesed? Um, scandalized. Yeah, it was scandalized. <laughs> and by something that left no tracks, just landed in a fountain, destroyed the beautiful statue of a little boy riding a dolphin and left the same way it came, leaving behind some bizarre rocks. Now, of course, with Evelyn's prowess in biology and medicine and the sciences, she was able to determine that these Thank were no you. rocks. Indeed, they were, in fact, eggs. These eggs, uh, had one missing and after abigail charmed the foreman with her uh, irresistible uh way with words you got wiles <laughs> definitely got them wiles um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. speaking of wiles <laughs> i'm getting mine uh <clears throat> charmed the foreman uh jeffrey loganthal and he would have told you this anyway, but he told you that one of his men didn't come back that day. He helped to move the rocks into the cellar of Enid's new home and then never came back. Now, Enid and you guys determined that one of the eggs was missing. You went to the home of one Alfred Hackett to find said missing egg and found out that the lady he was sweet on uh, was about to get a nice little gift of this pearlescent banana-shaped egg that you found. Um, but he wanted to clean it off. And he put it in some mildly boiling water. And the next day, that egg was uh, a, a little softer than it had been the day before. Ruth found it underneath the old mattress and sitting in the pot of water still, you, you saw something sloshing around and then it started to peck its way out of the egg shell right in your hands. It might have bitten through a palm, that was a bit later. Um, yeah, it didn't go well for Ruth uh, trying to handle this little, this little, little hatchling. This Not good with animals. <laughs> Oh, you don't have animal handling on your skill sheet? I'm from the city. It I'm we don't really the wildlife. I don't maybe Abigail, maybe I don't know. That's right. Abigail grew up on a farm oh, with her brother Fred, Ned, and Ed, I believe. Uh Fred, Ned, and Ted. That's right. And uh what happened to Fred when he was a boy? Because I believe he saw something rather disturbing. Oh, he did. He saw one of the eggs and he was never the same. He wasn't. Mm -mm. Mm. Touched it. Yes, yeah, near the lakes in Minnesota. Anywhere where the water is warm and there's wizards to be found. But we'll get to that in a minute. So sometimes the water's warm in Minnesota. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it. I wouldn't think that, no. But sometimes. Anyway. <laughs> Eloise, were you even gonna say something? Oh no, just that thinking about that Alfred. He was uh, he was a pill, which is what yeah, here called. you take over. Uh what happened when Alfred came back to the apartment and found you well, all? I in just it? lost a little bit of my sense because there was blood everywhere. And Alfred, you know, he's a pill. That's what we call a real ding dong here in 1925 after that <laughs> he, was a little, 
<laughs> things get a little bloody. Uh, I mean, things get a little fuzzy after all the blood. Uh, <laughs> I lost a little bit of sanity, you see, and I, I'm, I'm quite a bit shaken up. And I, I got on the phone with my dear, um, my dear friend Enid, and just remind me what she told me. <laughs> Enid, well, you called her after you went to the hospital uh, because. Well, uh, we'll get to why we went to the hospital in a minute. There was quite a commotion in this room. So Alfred shows up, the egg hatches, uh, more people come. It turns out Alfred was madly in love with Mary Carrington, daughter of Enid. She was given a note uh, and then a second note. The first note was kind of mushy. It was like, I have a present for you. I, I, I'm in love with your baby. Maybe you'll come be, be my baby. And uh, she wasn't into it. But the second note said, I think it's an egg, and it is hatched. And so naturally, she grabbed her professor of biology, Dr. Carl Bryden, <clears throat> deceased. And she brought him with her to Alfred's apartment, where you all uh, dig into exactly what this little creature was, this little thing with the size of a kitten with bat wings and terrible claws and terrible teeth with a tiny horse head. But of course, it's just a small, tiny thing. Uh, nothing too ferocious, even though it bit Alfred's thumb off and Ruth's palm. Um, then Mama comes crashing through the window. Mama rips off Doctor's head uh, and... How could I forget? Through Alfred's <laughs> You chest. did say it got fuzzy. And heart. And bloody. Yeah, rather bloody. I get why it was a little bit of a blackout for you, Eloise, because of your extreme sensitivity to blood. You are rather refined. Now, you all are carted off to the sanitarium along with Mary, who is absolutely catatonic. Ruth uh, had some bad rolls and was put into a straitjacket. <laughs> and then there you meet her brother, her brother William, Mary's brother William. William, of course, is the son of Enid Carrington, and he knows a thing or two about what mysterious creatures lurk in the night being a student at Miskatonic University, known for its prowess in the occult. Of course, Evelyn knows quite a bit. She is self-learned, but uh, knows her fair share about the occult in general. And Quite. Yeah, and you were led by William to go to the library at the university where Evelyn was in her element. What'd you find was, in the library? Uh, well, at first of all, I was finally able to stitch up my leg, which just, we, in the commotion, forgot it had been bleeding profusely. Um, but was able to snatch a med kit and just, uh, you know, patch myself right back up because that uh, sanitarium was just, they were a little slow on the upkeep in terms of patient intake and patient outtake and attending. It was very strange. Um, but then I got to smell all the books and then I got to touch the books and then I got to pick one and read one and then I might have stolen one, but I feel like I've contributed a lot to libraries over the years, so one might be owed to me every now and then. Absolutely. Your memoirs will be a 12-part series and you'll donate them. So. Thank you. <laughs> and speaking of libraries, Ruth Bleeker yes. has some skills that came in pretty uh clutch key in this scenario. Uh, Ruth, you want to talk about what you did? Well, you know, there's more than one way to get in a door. Sometimes you have a key and sometimes you don't have a key. But if you need to be on the other side, you just do what has to be done. I'm just saying. That's right. It was the wee hours of the morning and the library was locked, but that didn't get in their way, obviously, with Ruth Bleeker P.I.'s incredible skills at lock picking. Now, these four investigators have done some improving of skills because our session was completed technically when the scenario's over is when we should improve skills, but I wanted to do it now. So we did off camera, we went ahead and improved our skills. Uh, and so did anybody improve with their dice rolls? Oh. What you got? Who wants to go first? Evelyn, give it to oh, us. Oh, I'll go. Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> give it to us. <laughs> I improved to a 76 in arts and crafts, Ooh. a 63 in charm, and a 59 in firearms. And I'm going to say I got a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned that I'm very tall, didn't I? 
<laughs> I'm actually going back through to see in combat whether if any of you would get a boon to your dice rolls based on your size. And Eloise, you actually have a build of one, which is um, means you're very tall. And you actually will get to have a damage bonus of 1d4 if you deal damage because of your build of one. Typically, humans of an average size are... Uh, have a build of zero and so you know when i do the charleston the earthquakes <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way that should ever be described <laughs> yeah yeah you do wow uh awesome okay uh anybody else have any notable improvements they want to share but sure uh, um i got a little better at first aid i did have to patch up a thumb and a palm um but you know only by one because let's be honest i've done this a few times just not out in the field so this is just a different environment for me and i got a little better at yelling at people i'm quite intimidating sometimes i don't always know how to speak to people in public instead of on the phone where i can just make faces and then also um no that's about it i'm, I'm amazing at library use and i can't really get better at that Absolutely makes perfect sense. Uh, Ruth? Well, I got a little tougher, a little bit in the fighting. I'm up to 43 there. And uh, that locksmith roll, you know, I think I picked up a new trick from that very old-fashioned lock they had on the front of that library. So I'm up to a 64 Ooh. in that one. Nice. What about you, Abigail? Did anything go your way with a little improvement? Oh, yes. I improved my charm by one. <laughs> Just How one. Abigail Hermosa of you? Oh, yes. You might not think a journalist is charming, but this one is. I think I'm at a 16% now. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Because you had your starting was just the base level. Um, mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, so let's get back. Uh, what you learned in the library was you found an old article written in, a, I believe, 1906. Right now it's 1925, we all know. And in that article, there was mention of a creature shockingly similar to the one you all found. You read that a man named Andrew Lehman had reported this hideous creature and described it for an artist rendition. Of course, Eloise had a more appropriate artist rendition. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Abigail called up this gentleman Cool. Although gentleman's not the word. He he was not one for company. He had really just been relegated to uh, the dark parts of society ever since he he claimed to see this flying creature. And um, anyway, he was a very sad, lonely man. And for six dollars large, he met you on the side of the county road at the crack of dawn when you called him at what, 5 a.m.? And he pointed you towards the Ipswich salt marches. Marshes, marshes. That's a really hard word for me to say. Uh, William was at his breaking point. He had to go sleep a few hours at his dormitory at Miskatonic before going back to check on his sister, Mary. But um, you waded into the marshes, and that is where we pick back up. Does anyone recall anything about these damp and dewy marshes with a smell of, of rotting rotting um, foliage <laughs> all amongst you. Uh, anything strange that you recall? Evelyn, I believe you picked up a book in the library and you may yes. have seen some. Unfortunately, it's in Latin and that's one of the languages I forgot to study. No, true. Not well anyway, just in passing. No problem at all, because the book that you found was the Beatus Methodivo. And in this book of rituals, which you gained some power in the occult for even opening, you found information uh, about something that uh, you translated the name. You can't translate much of the text about these creatures, but there's some pictures. So yeah. what's happened is as you wade further into the marsh, each of you up to your knees in muck and mud, it's stinks of a foul decay. You feel the wetness and dampness of this place all through you. And as you get to a little center island, you see 
an enclosing of trees. In the midst of it are three small huts, but the island is rather large and you, and you can't see what's inside the huts from where you are positioned. As Eloise, with her incredible listening skills, has determined, with a rifle under her arm, there are creatures that are made of what sounds to be rocks and moss and mud. And there is one of them in the tree right above you. Of course, it has jumped down, as we know, and attacked Eloise. Oh, yes, that that's right. Oh, good. <laughs> I can turn my volume up. Was that too low? Great. We good. Uh, all right, and so you all are in the middle of combat. So I'm going to need a declaration oh. of intent from everyone. We are in the marsh, the creature in the tree. You can hear the stones that it's made of scraping together as it moves. It's a quiet sound, but a, a keen listener has heard it. And uh, we are going to be moving in dexterity order, which means Abigail will act first. But I'm going to need a declaration of intent from anybody who'd like to call it out of what you would like to do. So, I so shoot the thing. Part, this elemental, which you may or may not have heard other sloshings and sloppings around the frog croaking all around you. And there may be other things headed towards you. But Ruth has already taken the scalpel from Evelyn's med kit and stabbed this moss creature in the back. And it has recoiled and it took two damage from that. Uh, but I would like to know what else everyone would like to do. We'll call this a new round of combat aside from that, uh, that scalpel wound. Okay. Well, may I have some clarification? Did were there more? I'm not hearing your audio at all. Me? No. None at all. Let me check. Sorry, folks. Uh, let me. Evelyn, you know she's only just begun to come out of her shell. Play she's back. so quiet. Audio. <laughs> Am I? Am I Evelyn, you have to speak testies, up testies? here if you want people to hear you. So sorry. You need to know your voice is strong, Evelyn. You gotta oh speak my. louder. Sometimes I, I've spent so much time alone that sometimes I talk in my head and I don't realize that I'm not actually saying the thing out loud. Oh, um, you know. A lot of us just narrate of what's going on with us all the time. I think that's pretty normal, but you got to do it at a smaller volume. Like if you're sure. breaking into a place, you can't be like, "Oh man, I bet this is the joint," you know? Okay, well then I maybe I I'm going to I'm going to switch to speaking out loud, I think. I'm not actually sure because there I remember there was a lot of creatures also coming out of the distance, but I don't know if I just imagined that because there is an actual creature that just attacked my dear friend and then was subsequently stabbed by my other friend I and I'm still more. outside and I I just there's a lot of air and I'm not used to it being quite lagging dust and it's I'm, it's just a lot for me there's and dirt I, though and dirt is just wet dust right oh yeah I guess you've that's gotta true. go through the only way out is through you've gotta, right. you've gotta speak up Evelyn and you've right, gotta, right. You've gotta, you've gotta get it together I just need to remember the word for banishment in Latin. That's sort of where my mind is at. I need to remember what that word is. I'm sure I've read it in a book one day. I, the, there, I, I'm Can not so good at it. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Back. Was I no. speaking out loud this time? Oh, you were. There. Oh, wonderful. So, you all can hear me, yes? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. Technology. Oh, uh, we could always hear you. We were just telling Evelyn she needed to be stronger in her voice because clearly we could all we could all hear her. But but maybe maybe her intention needs to be stronger. Yeah, it's probably that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So so I finally gained the courage to say um, out loud instead of in my brain like I'm used to saying. I just need to remember the word for banishment in Latin. Excellent. So you're going to take your uh, combat turn to sort of step away from the action and rack your brain. So I think that's going to be a, an intelligence role. And we'll get to that because you're not first up in the dexterity order. No. Um, let's get everybody to declare what they'd like to do. And then we'll go through in dexterity order. So Eloise, do you want to tell me what you're doing? I know. I want to shoot I've, the thing. I think that feels not, right. <laughs> sure. And am I, am I a, uh, um, bleeding. 
I thought I was leaving. But I just wanted to go with your rifle. Hmm. I don't think and you took any damage from that attack because uh, it was not a surprise attack because you heard it coming and Ruth actually was very quick to jump on the brawl. So you actually got the surprise jump on it instead of the other way around. And it's definitely not as fast as some of you are. Uh, it You know, when you're made of moss, it's really hard to kind of get it all together. Uh, Ruth and Abigail, what is your declaration of intent? You gotta put them up. Yep. Love it. Fisticuffs, I think, yep. is the technical term. That is indeed. We're going to attack the rock monster now, eh? You can do literally anything you like, but you I mean, how many are there? How many does it seem that there are? I'm just seeing it looks it's a rock. Seems pretty strong. I don't know if my dexterity is gonna be like so strong against a rock. I'm going to need you to roll spot hidden if you would like to know how many there are uh, or how many you see in this moment. And Why that won't that? necessarily be your combat action, but you can just go ahead and roll that now if you'd like. Okay, I'll go ahead and roll that. So that's a witch D. Oh, uh, you, uh, so for anyone who's seeing Call of Cthulhu for the first time, let me just, since we're getting into rolls, uh, explain that we are on a D100 system. These are percentile dice. So basically, you take two D10s. One is a tens die with a, you know, double digits tens increments on it. And the other is a ones tens die, a ones units. Uh, and when you put them together, you get a percentage. So... Here we've got a 65, 45. Uh, so you're gonna roll your percentile dice. You are trying to roll below your skill level in that skill, in this example, spot hidden. Uh, and you know, the better you are at it, the higher your percentage. So rolling below it becomes easier. Okay, I got a 21. Excellent. And my spot hidden is 65. Uh, great. And there are also hard successes and extreme successes. So these are written on your character sheet. There's a spot written uh, for you to fill in what of your skill value is and what one fifth of your skill value is. Sounds like a hard success to me. Uh, sometimes I may ask you to make a role that is specifically a hard success because the ability to do something is going to be more difficult. All right, so you look around, and because you have such a hard success, you see through the trees, through the swamp, through the mangroves and the roots raised up and the erosion below them, you can see what you think is five other creatures aside from the one that you are currently engaged in combat with. They oh, all seem to be a similar type of swampy grass muck creature. Evelyn, what was that? I was just muttering to myself. I, you, I was speaking in my head before, and I was saying I wasn't sure if I had seen a few more creatures coming out of the darkness, and it sounds like I was right, and I wasn't just seeing things. Evelyn would never just see things. No, no, no. She's used no. to shadows in her dingy old home all by herself, but seeing the, things she doesn't do. This is the first time I wish I had. <laughs> All right, so uh, Abigail, did you want to also, can you describe to me what you would do? So, so far what's happened is the one that is close to you has jumped down on Eloise's neck. Ruth stabbed it, it scampered away, and it's about six feet away from you. Okay. Uh, the two are very well, close together with Evelyn looking at her book. Okay, I'm a little scared that there's five more. I'd probably honestly scream first before doing anything. And then after I screamed, I guess I would try to hit it. You're gonna hit it with- I'm uh, gonna hit oh, it. Okay, awesome. You're just gonna deck it and punch it or like a slap? Uh, I don't think I've got any weapons now. Uh, well, it's all gonna be under your brawl skill. I just want for flavor for you to describe well, it. So I'm I think I'm just gonna like chop it in the rock well, it's a rock. So the neck, I'm like, what's the vulnerable point of a rock monster? No Probably not the neck. So uh, well, it I, looks sort of like this. Oops, I can make that oh. better. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, it's that? That's the one a very humanoid shape. Oh. And it's got an emotionless face. 
it, it has this sort of mask to it. It doesn't show expression, but you can see which direction its eyes are pointed. And it is darting around, looking first at uh, Ruth, who is the closest and just laid a blow, and then back to Eloise, who it had come at. Because when you walked upon this island, it seems you set off some sort of mystical tripwire. These are magical bodyguards. Well, I think I'm going to go for its head and twist then. All right. Like Abigail, what is head. your dexterity level under your characteristics? 70. That is awesome. That is a mm. very high percentile of dexterity. So you are you are grabbing for its neck and twisting, huh? Mm. All right. I'm going to need a fighting brawl roll from you. Okay. Fighting brawl roll. And if I do that, let's see what I get. Fighting brawl roll is a 20. Is that uh, just, you can just tell me success or failure, whether you rolled under your skill. Success. All right. Okay. So describe to me the way uh, in which you pop its neck and then I'm going to have you roll for damage. Okay. So I creep up, I guess not behind it, in front of it. And I just kind of, and I, grab its neck under the mask and I go like Quah. and now its neck is facing that way and awesome it's okay it also sounds well. like a maneuver to restrain it sounds like it's in your arms in so I'm going to want you to walk. roll for damage and I believe on your character sheet under weapons for unarmed uh, your damage would be 1d3 is that right I'm not looking at it I can I think so Mine is. It might be for you as well. Excellent. Yeah, that's the standard for everybody. Okay, so I'm going to need you to roll a d6. Okay. And cut it in half and round up. Uh, I got a, I got a two, so I cut it in half and it's a one. All right, you deal. Uh, you, you twist its neck and it <sighs> growls at you, but you don't see its mouth move. It's a most disarming prospect to hear something create this guttural noise, but obviously it, it has an unmoving mask. Of Next up, uh, I believe that's going to be... I have a 65. Yes, ma'am. Yes, well, think, think, Evelyn, think, think. You're in mortal danger. Your friends are in mortal danger. You gotta think. What is the word? Come on, come on, come on. And I'm just flipping through the book and hoping that something looks familiar, whether it be picture or, or not. But come on, Evelyn, you know words. All right. Um, give me a library use. You don't say. <laughs> that would be a success. Excellent. All right. Uh, so you see a symbol. You don't speak Latin, but you no. succeeded. So what you see is, uh, do you remember that you saw that symbol on the tree oh, as you yeah. waited to this part of the island? There's a sort of horseshoe shape. And inside of that horseshoe on the tree that past where you walked up, there is uh, an X and a circle, and another scratch, and you see that in your book. You see that symbol, and you see the Latin word for destroy. <gasps> um, okay, well then I, I drop the book, and I reach in behind my back, and I, in front, bring out the hand crossbow, just aim it at the tree. Awesome. Uh, so you take a round to uh, prepare your crossbow. Uh, Eloise, I believe you're next in terms of dexterity. Is there anything hmm, that we know about these? Do they scare easily? Do we know? I guess you'll find out. I guess I'll find out because I'm going to shoot my rifle. Uh, and I shoot at the one that just attacked me. That pill. Excellent. Uh, you're at very close range, and I believe you're pretty trained with a rifle, so I'm going to allow you a bonus die. That means I want you to roll twice and take the better tens digit. Okay. Since you're rolling with a digital dice roller, just roll twice. Um, technically, the ones digit stays the same for both rolls. Okay. 
And I assume you are lining up your rifle and, and shooting? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm loading it up and I'm trying to get under my firearms, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I've got my number. 46 out of 59. Excellent, that sounds like a success to me, but you know what? This thing has the desire to self-preserve and it's going to try and move out of the way. Well, so do I. <laughs> uh, let's see if it's successful in its dodge. It is not. You shoot this thing, Eloise. Can you please roll for your rifle's damage? Yes. What dice is that? 1d6 plus 1. Ooh. So you can add the one after. Oh, oops. Six. Oh, all right. This thing, uh, it was making this terrible sound behind its emotionless, eerie mask. And you line up your rifle, no hesitation. You point it right at the thing's neck and it splatters. <gasps> Its rocks go everywhere. Bits of moss and grass are spread thin. I'm just glad it's not filled with blood. No, no, it's it's nothing but the smell uh, like a, like an old attic, with full of mold. Sounds it's gone. But right, I then, don't carry a gun, but I'm rethinking it. <laughs> now, Ruth, since you got an attack in earlier, that that helped uh, take this thing out. We'll go ahead and move on to the next round of combat as. The other five creatures, all from different parts of the island, come crawling or swinging from trees or lurking, dashing from side to side between boulders towards all of you from all different directions. And one of them was already very close, rising up out of the mud. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, let's roll a D8 comes for Ruth. You I was hoping they'd be jumpy. Hmm? I was hoping they'd be jumpy and 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 flit about after the hearing of the rifle, but no dice. It yeah, was worth well. a shot. <laughs> when Evelyn looked into her book, she saw images that showed these things showing a sort of perimeter, sort of bodyguard, a mystical bodyguard is the feeling that Evelyn gets when she looks at these images and her book of rituals. So as one of these things, you're all distracted as one seems to be appearing almost right behind you. Uh, you all turn outwards, I assume, so that your backs are facing each other, the safest way to behave. And Ruth, this thing is coming for your ankles. It wants to pull you to the ground and it's going to use its brawl skill. Now you have two options when this thing comes for you. You may either fight back, which means the tie goes to the attacker, or you could use your dodge skill and the tie would go to the dodger. Basically, uh, it has a, a level, a skill level, and you have a skill level. It doesn't matter what your exact number is. It matters what your level of success is. A failure is a failure. A success is a success. A hard success or an extreme success or a critical role would, of course, uh, elevate in that order. I'm going to fight. Ooh, okay. Describe to me what you do when it's this moss creature full of rocks crushing together sweeps you by the ankles. I'm gonna try to hop out of the way and ideally come around with the leg it didn't just grab and clock it in its stupid rock head with my boot. Awesome, boot? awesome. A swift boot. kick to oh, the oh, boob oh. boot. Yeah, oh. into its boob with your boot. Great, okay. So <laughs> the attack boobs going are a whole nother level. This <laughs> is an opposed fighting brawl check. So you're ro rolling for fighting brawl and I'm rolling for fighting brawl for this creature. What level of success do you have? Or failure? Uh, regular success. The uh, the, this thing got a hard success. It sweeps you down and you fall onto your face. Uh, it, it grabs you and it pulls backwards and you're going to need to take 
uh, damage equal to, ooh, five damage. Ooh. What? Five damage? I had to roll a d6. He landed this blow. I, I guess it was more than just a pull. It pulled you backwards. You face planted in the mud and there was a rock right where your face landed. It cocks you right in the chin. How uh, much of your HP is five? Because I just went you, from 11 to six. Okay. Great. It's less than half, uh, it's not more than half or half or equal. Half or more than your total HP. So Is it uh, not? you don't need to roll for constitution. 11, it, you only took five damage. So you're down to six. Right. Oh, math. Had you oh. taken six or more, you'd have to roll for constitution to see if you stay conscious. Now, let's enter a new round of combat. What would you like to do, everyone? There is, uh, there are... Of course, that was the second one we've encountered so far. And you know that there were five more, six total. Uh, one of them is already obliterated. One of them has Ruth on, on the ropes. And then uh, there's, let's see, uh, there's, there's Evelyn sort of with her book in the center of you all, I imagine. Eloise, there were two that were closer to you because you stepped a little way away from the group so they wouldn't get the backfire of the rifle. And then there's one going for Evelyn and one going for Abigail. What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to shoot um, the one going for Ruth. Uh, Abigail, I mean, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> I got okay. Abigail, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just calling over for help because... Um, I see that one's coming for me and I'm dexterous, but I don't think I've got the most strength and I certainly haven't got a weapon. Sure, you can come up with any crazy plan you like. I'll give you a minute to think about it. You can climb up a tree and jump on its head. You can do whatever you want. Evelyn. I have the intention to yell pertinent information while also attacking the one that is dragging Ruth into the depths. Awesome. Am I allowed to shout and shoot? Yeah, we'll allow that for sure. Uh, let's Thank let's uh, we'll go in dexterity order when we get to it. Then we'll have you. Actually, no, you could you could yell it out right now since. Uh, All right. Yell well, out. Um, I'm going to yell. Um, while aiming at at the thing dragging Ruth, Eloise, shoot the tree with the runes. Oh. And and then yeah, that's what I'm shouting. I don't think my I don't think my thing will do. We need to damage the symbol. Oh! I get to shout more. Sure. I'll do that instead. Uh, Abigail, you just hang on, love. You just you're you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. I've got booze back in the car. You're gonna be swell. Oh, oh, as right. long as we got the booze. Don't Ruth, worry about, about the monsters. It's a good thing they're never gonna make alcohol illegal. <laughs> I think it currently is. Is it? Shit. Oh, yes. Oh, Where the, I got to oh, catch oh, up on my news. <laughs> uh, Ruth, uh, uh, what are you up to? Uh, can I, by any chance, grab that rock I just hit my head on and bash this creature in the head with it? Absolutely, you can. I'll look up what the stats might uh, be for a rock. While Abigail, we're going to make this first move. Go ahead and describe to us what you'd like to do. Okay, what I'd like to do is get down in the marsh and just lie flat and blend in so I have the element of surprise and then go, Wah! Okay, I'm going to need you to roll for uh, an extreme success for stealth mm -hmm. because they are watching you and closing <laughs> in on you. So you trying to hide from them will be on the extreme difficulty side. Oh, I'm okay, I'm just thinking outside the marsh here. I love it. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can, you can change it up, I'll allow it. But uh, also, if you did get that, that'd be pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm rolling a 1D100. And Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna get, I get under your tiny number next to stealth on the last column of your skills. Yes. One fifth value. I need to get it below a seven. Okay. Seven. I'm rolling D one hundred. Odds are ninety three percent they see me. 
let's, let's just see. Whoa. I got an 11. Oh, that. Pretty good success. I but not you may spend luck if you would like to make this a success. I uh, would love to spend my luck. Okay, so on your luck score, that would be four luck that you have to spend. So go down four in luck permanently. Where's my luck? I don't it's above. There's a whole sliding scale with many numbers. Above your skills, below your oh, character. Oh, I see. Oh, I've got lots of luck. Oh, I can spend it. That makes sense for Abigail. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I've got I've got 60 lux. That's so I'm going to go down to 56 and I'm going to pop down in the marsh. Okay. So <laughs> don't can you even describe know me how Abigail uses her skills and her art of surprise to completely just erase herself from this combat and dive into the mud in such a way <laughs> Then no creature sees her. Oh, exactly. You want me to describe it? Yeah. So I, oh, I, I yeah. So I'm, I'm in the, I'm in like this hold, and then it's like, oh no, and then there's another one coming for me, and I see it, but it kind of sees me, but not really. So I get down in the marsh, and I go like this, and I go like this, and I blend into the marsh, and I blend in, and I blend in, I believe it, and then, and then it's near me, and doesn't even know, and I go like, ah! and then I get up on the neck again, and I go like. Ah! All right, we'll let you on your next round of combat get to attack the the one closest to you that was coming towards you. But right now it was crawling towards you. You took this turn to hide in the mud. I just hid. I just hid. Okay, I don't. Want, I'm just thinking in the future. No worries. Now you'll get that. the. Now I'll give you a bonus die on your next attack because you have the art of surprise on your side. So now Evelyn, you had a plan with this crossbow. I did. I well, I originally was going to shoot the tree, but um, you know, I I thought. Roof is in danger. That's far more important at this particular moment. Um, and also, I don't think an arrow will do much damage to a tree. And I want maximum damage to the tree. So I'm shooting the thing um, with my hand crossbow. I'm Excellent. using my archery skills that I've honed since I was a young girl. Oh, and I'm going to spend two luck points to make that a success. <laughs> Goodbye. Ooh, okay. Okay. Goodbye, luck. Goodbye. Goodbye, you were great. And uh, while you sh it, it pulls Ruth backwards. Uh, it, it, she slams her face on the rock, and then it looks up and it sees the crossbow pointing at it, and it attempts to just roll out of the way. Let's see if it does. Six points of damage. It definitely did not dodge, and it takes that damage. All right, it, it is. Uh, you struck it right in its mossy chest. Uh, actually, this one's mostly mud because it came up right behind Ruth out of the muck. So this one's primarily a slop mud creature. And you see big chunks of mud fly out of its chest. But you still see its masked face with mud dripping down sort of turn to you right after that shot is fired. It's not oh. moving much, but it's not gone yet. All right, next up is Eloise. I'm going to take my rifle and I'm going to hold it the way people who are good at guns hold rifles, which is like this, and I'm going to shoot the runes. Oh, okay. Yeah, the good at gun stance. You take it and you're shooting it at the tree that Evelyn walked past and recognized. All right, so this is sort of, the, the runes were actually facing out into the muck. So you need to sort of wade a bit into that watery, muddy water in order to get the shot off. And then, uh, well, a tree doesn't get to dodge. So uh, give me a roll for firearms and let's see how well you do. <laughs> Oh, I would like to spend luck. <laughs> sure. I got uh, a 73 and I, my firearms is a 59. How much do I need to spend? Oh. 14? Uh, actually, uh, I just wanted to make sure you didn't get a critical failure because you took your turn to shoot an inanimate object. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, you were successful. You shoot and bark goes flying yes. uh, in every direction. And you see the creature that Evelyn had just 
hit with her crossbow, that thing that was just looking around but didn't seem to be able to move its mud-filled body much, it disintegrates. It bursts and dissolves. The mud slops all over Ruth's back and all down Evelyn's front. Uh, ah! Yeah, but uh, there are still four creatures coming towards you. Uh, let's see, Eloise, you sort of have moved yourself away from the two that were coming at you. They, they recognized the threat of your rifle and uh, saw what you did to their familiar. Um, then it's gonna be, we're with Ruth. Ruth, you're on the ground, you're holding a rock that you have just cracked your chin on, who knows how badly. Uh, but didn't feel great. You're you're feeling. Uh, I pushed uh, some mud on there. Yeah, it's bleeding pretty pretty intensely. You could definitely use some first aid when this is all over. But uh, what would you like to do now? As you see uh, one moving up behind Evelyn, who has turned to you to help you with your struggle, and one moving up. It was going towards Abigail, but she's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Gone. Can't see me. They got Abigail. <laughs> um, Ruth, it is your turn to uh, change your action. You have the rock in your hand if you'd like to move towards doing something else. Oh, yeah. I want to push past Evelyn as she stands there in the horror of being covered in mud, which I know is her least favorite thing. But I'm fine. I'm covered in mud and blood, and I've been here before. I haven't seen anything like this, but they'll be gone in a second, and I want to bash in the head with a rock. Awesome, you take a few steps towards it. This one is made mostly of leaves and, and more rocks you hear scratching as it moves up behind her. It's kind of a beautiful scene as Evelyn's facing you and your um, demon creature and you're facing her and hers. And I need you to roll uh, with a rock. Uh, let's see, that's gonna be brawling, but it will give you a little more damage if you're able to do so with a blunt object like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Woohoo! Uh, needed a forty-three. Got a forty-two. Ooh, you have a knack for rolling exactly a few points under your skill level. Okay, just so barely making it. The Ruth Bleaker way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this thing is actually going to uh, uh, instead of dodge, it wants to fight back. So let's see how it does. Ooh. It's able to fight back and it got just below its fighting. Uh, so each of you move towards each other. Uh, let's see. And uh, the Taiko, you are actually the aggressor in this situation. So you actually are the one that is able to smash this rock creature with its own kin, this rock. Uh, and, and I'm gonna have you roll just a 1d6 instead of a 1d3 uh, because you are have this weapon, this blunt object. Well, it's a two, but it's two. All right, it was coming up behind Evelyn, but it has been slowed. It, it, it jolts backwards as you smash into it with this. And now it's angry. Thanks, it's Ruth. Coming for it's not the only one. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so uh, now all the creatures get a chance to come for all of you. And oh. first up is the rock and leaf creature behind Evelyn. And you know what? Yeah. It sees Ruth, it felt that rock, and it sees Evelyn turned the wrong direction holding a crossbow. So Evelyn, it's coming for you. What do I, do I, do I, since I'm faced the other way, but I did just see uh, Ruth, do I get a roll to save myself is what I'm asking. You do absolutely get a roll to dodge, but don't even yes. worry about it because this thing, uh, when Ruth knocked it with the rock, its face mask just sort of turned sideways and it thinks it sees you, but it, its vision must be temporarily off because it completely just goes for the neck right beside you. It must have been seeing double if it even sees through that thing. Now, the one coming towards Abigail uh, is very confused that nothing is where it was looking, but it's actually, I wonder if it has a spot hidden value. Oh, it does. Okay, let's see if it spots Abigail in the mud. 
doesn't see her, walks right past her and starts going towards Ruth, who is closest on the beach there, uh, but isn't to you yet. There's the two creatures that were heading towards Eloise. And uh, these ones are extra mossy. They sort of look like twins. They just sort of squish as they move. And uh, Ruth, one comes for you. Uh, let's see, it's gonna come at you with some brawling. Um, Basically, it's uh, scooping up the mud, and it, it is full of tiny rocks, and it's going to fling them at you. Epic failure. Completely whiffs. And the other one, Eloise, starts splashing into the water after you. And it grabs you. <gasps> by the waist. No! And oh, pulls oh. backwards. You may dodge or, dodge, or you may describe to me how you fight back. Oh, I was going to use my arts and crafts, but now I'm incapacitated. I'd like to dodge. Um, sure, your dodge roll is going to be half your dexterity. It's also listed under skills, and it's also on the very bottom right uh, on your like little cheat sheet for combat. Half dex. Okay. My dex is forty-five. So twenty-two and a half. Twenty-two. Maths. I believe you. <laughs> Here we go. Found it. All right. It's okay. I've worn this outfit twice already. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Give me a roll for Dodge. Uh, what do I roll? A hundred? One hundred? Hey, one hundred. Always. Always. Okay. I got a forty-four. It pulls you and it lifts you up off your feet. Oh your no. Your still in your hands as it drags you underwater in the mud. <gasps> yeah, um, let's see, it's gonna roll. Oh, can I, can I take a moment to toss my rifle at someone so it doesn't get wet? Oh, ooh, ooh. That is a smart plan. Uh, I'm gonna need you to give me mm. the row skill as you take six points of damage from the <gasps> rack, from the water that starts to fill your mouth. It squeezes Ooh. you in such a way that you didn't have a chance to get a breath of air before it sinks you underwater. So uh, we'll take six damage in just a second, but give me give me a throw skill just to see if you get it up onto the land. Okay, I'm now at, at eight for hit points and is throw a skill? Throw, okay. It just says 20%. That's your starting scale if you don't have any specialty in it. Got it. Okay. Um. Oh, four. Oh, incredible. All right. You're able to get the rifle onto land. Uh, let's see. Your starting hit points was 14, so you took six. So you're now at eight, but you don't need to roll for constitutions. That's not a major wound. You're just, your lungs are filling up with air, and you're going to need to try and get out of its grip in just a moment. Um, with air? Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> mucky, murky, dirty water. It stinks. It <laughs> tastes <laughs> rot. It seems like maybe this water has been used for more than just a swamp. It tastes like maybe there has been death thrown into this place. In fact, remember, you are looking for the hideout of a certain wizard. All right, uh, so we're gonna, that was, that was their, these creatures, a chance to attack. Now, the balance shifts again, Abigail. Uh, let's go ahead and do some declaration of intent for this next round of combat. Everybody can tell me what you plan to do and then we'll go once around again. See what damage you can inflict. And remember what Evelyn has taught you all. Uh, what, anybody jump in. Go, uh, go ahead, Abigail. Were there, uh, oh, I was gonna say, might as well go in order of, of, of initiative just so we don't say something that someone else might already be doing ahead of us. Oh, you're welcome to declare intent in any order, and then we will resolve it in dex order. But ah, okay. this is a little bit of metagaming if you wanted to share information and help each other out as humans instead of Are there characters? more trees no. with, with symbols? Do you want to roll for spot hidden? I would love to roll for spot hidden. All right. That might take your uh, entire combat turn because you are engaged currently in combat. So you can look around and see if you see more symbols. It'll take a moment. Who else? 
Well, um, I will say then, this goes against literally every ounce of my instincts, but Eloise is my dearest and oldest friend and has always supported me and has been there for me in spite of everyone else in society thinking that I don't belong. And so I'm going to be diving in to try and rescue her. That's and I will need to roll sanity because I do not know how to hold my breath very well. My lungs are very weak from a childhood illness and I... Evelyn, you are my favorite player. I mean, Gina, you are my favorite player for <laughs> reminding me that you should indeed roll sanity. That is a major part of this game. Yeah. And there's a lot of sanity that may or may not have needed to been rolled in this whole encounter, but yes. <laughs> The moment you all have seen a lot, you've seen blood and gore, these rock and mud and muck monsters, they didn't do much to scare you, but when you see Eloise pulled below the surface, I'm gonna need you to roll for sanity for sure. Yeah, right now? You saw it too, give me a roll. Abigail, your face oh, is in mud, right now. you're okay for now. Can I, can I? I don't remember what it is. I just the, the, the same D20 or the same percentile, right? Uh, on the top of your character sheet, yes. you have a full range like luck, next to luck. You have a full one to 100 or 90. Oh boy. What'd you roll? I rolled a 74 and my, ins my insanity is only 60. Yeah, that's not going to be great because this is going to be a D6 of insanity loss. So go ahead and give me a D6. Well, I got a 77. Give me a D6 roll. Oh, no. Did you get a six? I rolled a six. Okay. Me too. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> For the Eloise. aforementioned reasons. Oh, dear Lord. I, oh. Eloise, I just ripped how dearly your friends care about you. Evelyn, get it together. You're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Just we can't you. hear you. You're yeah. underwater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's horrible. Evelyn and Ruth, I'm going to need you to roll for intelligence. And this is a role you would like to fail. Because okay. if you see the consequence of this horror and what it might mean that this thing even exists, well, you might temporarily go insane. Okay. I want so, to fail this. You do. You want to roll above your intelligence level, which is not easy to do. Okay. Better than my education. I would take the education. Oh, me too. Yeah? <sighs> All right. Uh, Evelyn takes deep, deep, calming breaths the way she's taught herself to do, even though her lungs are not strong ever since she was a child and, and had that, that horrible disease. Bout of scarlet fever with complications. You handle it. You are able to steal yourself and you prepare to dive in after Eloise. Ruth? No. Ruth, that's a big no. You know, when that rock hit you in the chin, it really jostled your whole skull. You love these people, no matter how long you've known them. Uh, it may have not been a terribly long time, but you care deeply about Eloise. You were impressed with her prowess with a rifle and how she knew when and who to bribe at any given time. It's one thing to drag me underwater, but Abigail's gone and Eloise, Eloise does not deserve to be buried in the muck in a nothing swamp in the middle of New England by a wizard? Can I roll? I, I'm here. Don't worry about me. I'm crazy. Yeah, and, and Ruth hears you, but she's not sure. She thinks the mud is talking to her. Ruth, can like you describe to me the involuntary action you do? Uh, you, you, um, you, let's see, you were just attacked by, uh, you just attacked the creature right behind Evelyn and bashed it with that rock and went a little dizzy. What do you do that is completely involuntary because of your temporary insanity? Ah. Uh... I'm right here for you. I'm here. I'm still alive. Don't worry about me. <laughs> should it uh, should it be ideally something damaging or just something random? Sorry. We'll see. Uh, sure. What do you get? What do you got in mind? Well, because the worst thing I could probably do right now would be to freak out and slam that stone down on the ground oh. and take out that gun. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the fact oh. you got the rifle seems to your benefit. I'm going to say you start screaming and squawking like the bird you saw today, the bird, that creature that ripped off thumbs and, and made you be put in. <laughs> yeah, you just start doing the bird impression. <laughs> and you start splashing into the water. Okay, excellent. <coughs> Abigail. You have the element yeah. of surprise in your favor, and there is the creature that was heading towards you sort of on the bank of this muddy thing where you have dove into the mud. Uh, what would you like to do? Oh, I would like to, I would like to sneak up behind it and choke it. Excellent, okay. Uh, that's a brawl roll. Give me your bra brawl skill. And oh, it's my like brawl? Yeah. Um, I'm it's not my sure. dexterity. Yeah. No, it's your brawl. Fighting in parentheses brawl. brawl in the second column of your skills. Fighting brawl, 35. So I'm going to need to have a what kind of success, you said? This thing is pretty uh, slippery let's say. And okay. uh, so you're going to need to roll rather well because it rolled rather well to dodge. Oh no. oh, no. I rolled a 39. On your 25? Uh, on on Which my... Is... Wait. On my D100, I rolled a 39. Fail? Gotcha. That's a what fail. is your skill in roll? 35. Oh, Ah, all right. Now, but, but, but let's do luck in this. And I might have cheated this role earlier, but we're not going to cheat it again because technically, when you're engaged in combat, you don't get a chance. Oh, no you know luck. what? Can't luck. You can't push a role during combat because you would just have to wait for the next turn. Um, but I would allow I spinning luck. luck in a brawl. Uh, up to you. But let me tell you. This thing got a hard success on its dodge. So you sneak up at. Oh, well, I promised you a bonus die. Please re-roll and use whichever tens die is better. And it got a bonus. <gasps> okay. Okay. I do it again. And this time mm -hmm. I get a 11. <gasps> I think that would be, what, that's at least a hard success for you. Uh, all right. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, a hard success? It's harder uh, than a 17. It's not an extreme, though. It's not it also extremely hard. hard. It's little, you grab it, and you had that element of surprise, right. but it's used to fighting. It's here to protect and uh, do its job well, and it ducks down to slip out of your grasp. It's turning around, and it's preparing to hit you back, but right now it is uh, Evelyn's turn? Yeah. Evelyn. Um, you were going to dive in? Yeah. I'm going to dive in after Eloise and I, you know, I, 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 I might do myself and say I probably will have to roll another sanity for, I have one of my phobias is, is not being able to breathe. And I would say swimming in a swamp is not being able to breathe. So. Gotcha. Uh, do you want to dive in or do you want to sort of wade in? It's, it's way steep water. So unless you oh, thank go goodness. fully under, oh, I, I thought it was for sanity. Okay, go she, then, then. Then wonderful. Then it, it. Then it's more of a than a, a a waist and like a swishing of the arms in order to drag up, yeah. so she can at least take a breath. This thing is still holding her down under the water. She's r splashing around trying to get out of its grip, but her head is still <gasps> underwater. So you can go to rip her out of its grasp, or you can go and try and attack the thing. What would you like to do? No, I would like to rip because um, I'm. Uh, it, it's. That is what I think is more important is letting her breathe rather than, um, I'm not much, you know, my, my spiting skills is more um, uh, educational than, than implemental. Absolutely. So, and I think that I know what to do to reflect that. I'm going to have you roll for your strength skill. And typically characteristics, your eight main characteristics are usually more powerful than some of your other skills if that's not something you specialize in. But this is your friend. This is someone you love. And it's that mom lifting a car or, you know, a Studebaker strength that you dig deep for. So give me a constitution roll. Oh, sorry. Con strength, right? 
My, my lungs may not be strong, but my biceps are. Oh, that, that my friends is a two out of 70. Oh, wow. That is almost a critical success. That is the most of extreme successes. You lift me you. up out of here and I go flying. <laughs> I, yeah, just, I, I, I lift on. you over the air, in the air like sanctuary and drag you back up onto the island screaming like a mama bear. Yes, <laughs> you do. This thing is left behind you in the dust. You are way too strong. You take big galloping strides back to the shore uh, because you are determined. All right, excellent. Okay, so now Eloise, uh, you <laughs> you spit the water out of your lungs and what would you like to do next? I would like to embrace my friend. And say thank you for saving me. Oh my, you're all dirty. Oh, ignore that, don't. You are not dirty at all. You are clean and and you are my friend and and we feel good. Where's my gun? It's right on the shore in front of you. I'll allow you to pick it up. I take my gun and okay. I pivot. Then I'd like to shoot it. Hmm. Okay, so here's what could happen. Either I'll have you roll with a penalty dime, which means roll and take the worst tens digit uh, because it's gonna take you a little around to aim or uh, you can take this the rest of this round because you've already moved out of the water and taken your hug. Uh, you can take the rest of this round to uh, aim aim more specifically or yes. take the risk and shoot with penalty. I take the risk. Okay, are you going, which one are you going for? Uh, the one going for Abigail, the one in the water that threw you down. There are other runes you said, right? Well, only one exploded. No so. one found any yet. Would you like to roll for spot hidden? Yes. Okay, you pick up your rifle and then you take this chance to roll. And next round, you will have had a moment to steady your rifle if you'd like. Okay. 25 spot hidden. <sighs> ah, 18. All right, uh, you take this moment, you're breathing deeply, having just reinvigorated your zest for life. With your friend Evelyn, you rotate slowly and you see far off in the distance, uh, there were the two that came up behind where you were and you see um, some scratches on a tree over in that direction. Also closer to you, kind of where Abigail was, there's, there's a sort of, um, in, in the dirt, there's an engraving. Uh, actually, it's on a stump. There's an engraving similar. It's got a horseshoe, but it has different symbols inside the horseshoe. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones you see there. Like rune. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna shoot the rune in a couple minutes, okay? Is that <laughs> still the plan? Evelyn? You know what, it's an inanimate object. Let's just, you can do it with penalty. <laughs> Great. Uh, roll, roll twice. And it's inanimate, so it'll be easy to shoot, but just don't get a critical failure. Okay, first one was a 12. Okay, pretty awesome. Second one was a 13. All right, which one are you aiming for? Uh, the stump. All right, you shoot at the stump, and that thing is just a divot, smashes through the inside of it, and a loud roar of your rifle as it kicks back, but you're used to the feeling. You <laughs> love that feeling. <laughs> Ruth as a bird, still temporarily insane, squawks at this horrible noise. She was pretty close to that stump. Uh, and this is the one that was closest to, uh, let's see, we destroyed the one in the mud. Goodbye. Uh, and you destroyed the one that was closest to Evelyn, actually, that one that kept coming at you. Uh, all right. So, Everybody's gone. Ruth is insane, but Ruth, uh, can you? You're gonna, you're gonna uh, just keep flapping around this round for just a moment as uh, the the creature that was coming towards Abigail and ducked and slipped out of its reach turns around Abigail and it's swinging at you. It's taking its muddy fist. Lucky you. 
it missed. All right, uh, let's see. There's also the one that was furthest away. Uh, there's the one in the water. Uh, that is taking this moment to splash up and catch up to you. Uh, it's actually coming for you, Evelyn, because it had your friend and you were the one that slowed it down. <sighs> Not quite. Uh, it, 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 it jumps up in the tree above you and it swings to kick, but it's a little off. It, it hadn't quite gotten its aim right. And it swings and loops around the tree branch above your head. Uh, let's see. It's in the tree now. And then there's the one that was furthest away that's now moving closer. It's going towards the squawking roof. <laughs> but it didn't get to her yet. <laughs> move, but it's not fast enough. All right. Uh, so now, Abigail, we're in a new round of combat. You tried to grab the one close to you and didn't quite. Oh, uh, but it was exploded. Oh, gosh, I'm getting confused. Oh, no, just kidding. That was the one close to Abigail. All right. So. Evelyn, uh, Abigail, there's still one that just ducked out of your reach. Would you like to go for it again? Oh, I would, you betcha. Or I'm you could go do for anything it. else that your heart desires. No, I just want to keep going for it. It just slipped out of my reach. All and right. We need, we need to take him out. <laughs> what is everybody else up to? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, Ruth, give me a roll for sanity. I'm not going to make you take a penalty. I just want to know if you are sane again. <laughs> And then Evelyn and Eloise, do you have a plan for this round? You've just picked up your rifle. You've shot the hole in the stump. You saw the other tree with some scratchings uh, across the island. And those are the only ones you see at the moment. Can mm -hmm. I use luck on sanity? Oh, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep I on shooting until the cows come home, baby. I'm going to shoot them all. I'm going to shoot every rune I see. Love it. Okay, uh, Ruth, technically I was supposed to roll a D10 to see how long you're temporarily insane, and I got a two. So this will be the second round that you squawk. Uh, okay, Eloise is going shooting for that other rune, baby. And then, Shoot uh, for the runes. Even if you yeah. miss, you land among the stars, baby. Oh, wow. With that kind of talk, you could make it all the way to Hollywood, honey. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see. There's three runes you found total, and two have been destroyed. Uh, Evelyn, what are you gonna do? I, I suppose my intention also is to 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 run and and pick up my my arrow from the ground from when it was evacuated. Right, you must have dropped it when you jumped into the water. And also the one I shot, but then it exploded. Uh, hopefully, leaving my arrow there. Oh yeah, for sure. How many arrows um, do you carry with that cr mini handheld crossbow of yours? Um. It's not written, so I, oh, uh, no, it's not written. I'm going to just you say, say to let me know. Wait. Four arrows. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, you still got um, three that are uh, on, on, uh, attached to your person somewhere. Yes, but this arrow, the, the, this, this is, uh, this weapon means a lot to me. And so I don't lose the arrow. So my intention is to go pick up the one instead of using another, um, with the intent of going and finding the trees to scratch out. Excellent. Okay. So we'll have you do a spot hidden on your turn and I'll give you a bonus down on that because you know exactly what you're looking for now. Yeah, I'm right, going I'll where they appeared. It sort of seems to correlate with the trees. Yes. So I'm Excellent. going in the directions. Perfect. Yes, towards the two directions that haven't really been explored as much. Yeah. All right, Abigail, what's up? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. The last remaining one. The one that is uh, really close to you, the one that slipped out of your grip for sure. Mm -hmm. There's um, well, there was the one that was in the water, jumped in the tree. There's the one that is uh exploded there's a couple that are <laughs> exploded three in fact actually i'm sorry eloise when you hit the stump i forgot to mention that the one that was closest to evelyn burst into a billion pieces uh it was more mossy so you know it didn't get any mud on anyone's clothes it's nice of it uh so there are still three coming at you uh, and two runes destroyed so abigail Give me, describe to me what kind of move you want to do and then roll for it. Oh, I think I'd like to jump to the one in the tree. You're going to climb the tree? 
I will, I will let you do climb or jump, whatever you prefer. Well, a well, question. Are we now trying to just get away from it? Because maybe we don't need to kill all of them. You can ask your compatriots. You can shout at them. I'd like to. I'd like to confer with with our team, our new squad <laughs> here. Okay, Ruth, you just pipe down now. So, Evelyn and Eloise, what you thinking? Yeah. Do we need to? What's our goal here? Do we want to take them all out, or do we want to just, you know, scram? Well, there's a few trees left, and that seems to be doing the trick. But also, if we don't deal with the wizard, all of our friends are going to be subsequently eaten by at least five other of these creatures, and a mom, and a possible dad. <gasps> okay, but like oh we've God. got, but don't like we've got some other pressing matters. The eggs, right? Yeah, this. That's what this. I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's what we're trying to deal with. The eggs are going to hatch and we need to deal with the wizard and it's So we should leave pets. here. We should just see if we can go. But the wizard's here. Oh, shit. Why am I arguing to stay outside? <laughs> okay, right. so I guess we stay here and fight. Is that the final word here? If you want to leave, I don't blame you. I mean, I'm Thank just yourself. thinking of our long-term goals here. Eloise, what what you thinking? Abigail, if we destroy the runes, I think that um, the, the curse will be broken, something like that. I'm not the expert Evelyn is, but it seems to be working, and I think there's only one more. Uh, as, uh, can I have? No, okay, so there's it. just uh, one more, the one in the tree? There are three still moving around in all of your vicinity. One in the tree, one next to you, Abigail, on the shore where you hid in the mud, and uh, one that was the furthest away and took a dash toward Ruth but missed. Um, so as uh, all of you are preparing, Evelyn seems to be on to the fact that destroying these rooms has some effect. The very first one that Eloise obliterated with a shotgun or a rifle blast, those rocks start to jump and vibrate on the ground. They start to jump closer together and the moss seems to sort of be trickling upwards in the most unnatural way as the creature that you blasted away, Eloise, starts to reform itself as an arm is made. It starts to grab pieces and put itself back together more quickly. I need everyone to roll for sanity because that's a most unnatural thing. Oh, dip. Uh, it's the, okay, to clarify, the one that exploded from the tree being blown up or, the, or was it exploded by a gunshot? Uh, this creature was exploded by Eloise's first gunshot of the night. Oh. <laughs> two runes so far. Cutest, petutiest little sneeze I've ever heard. Maybe the maybe they'll just roll over from cuteness. <sighs> My I got an 89. <gasps> okay, uh, I'm gonna roll for your. You lose one point of sanity, Eloise. Okay, anybody else fail their sanity? Nope. Oh, I'm. I think I'm okay. Okay, Abigail, you're you're gonna make a move now. You can do whatever you like. Are you gonna I fight? One, you gonna one good. Okay, um, cool. I'm gonna. That's a critical success. I Abigail. got a critical sanity. I'm just good in the sanity department. You read many novels in preparation for writing your articles, and you've written many a novel about a creature reforming itself. Seeing this validates what you've known all your life. This validates what I've known all my life. That's right. All right. Are you attacking? Are you looking for more runes? What would you like to do? I guess I'm just going to attack, and I'm I'm just going to go for the one that's closest to me, you know? Right. You're Bird in a hand. Ah! Okay. The crafty thing in my hand. What's in your hand? Oh. The thing. It's worth more than in the bush or whatever. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, then two in a tree. Or one in a tree and one somewhere else. Okay. What what, how's, your, how's your swing go? So my swing, let's see. Fighting. I swing, and I wish I had used the one for this one, but I, I roll and I swing. And I get a 35. 
So and that's exactly your skill, is it not? Exactly. All right. Roll for damage, please. Oh, and that's a D10, yeah? D6. D6, yeah. Cut it in half, yeah. Okay, got a three, so I divide it by two, which is 1.5, and I round up, which is two. I'm going to get nice. two. Okay. okay. Excellent. Uh, you swing your fist at this thing. You're angry. You think I've got eggs to deal with. <laughs> I've got eggs to deal with. It connects right in the jaw, and its mossy jaw goes flying off. Uh, Goodbye, jaw. Mossy jaw. It has that terrifying mask, which in fact flies off, and you see the moss underneath. Oh, that's so scary without your mask. The, ma the moss blinks at you. And turns. I back. Okay. Evelyn? I'm looking for those runes. Okay, those you trees. Can you can take the better tens digit. Okay. Bad. Still bad? Still not a success. Can you spend luck? You can no. push it if you want to destroy oh, it. I'll the way in which you risk your life to do it. Um, well, I would say that everything I'm doing is literally risking my life, so I'm sort of dodging in and out between the trees, trying not to be near the creatures while, while looking at every possible tree that's in the directions in which they emerged from the water, and I push. Yes! <laughs> 23. Uh, as, as my base 25 look. All right. Oh, do I That's see, does something happen if I push? Now if I succeed. Now if I succeed? What happens is you stumble upon a rock as you turn towards the center of the island and you see the three huts, which you can only assume holds the wizard and all his secrets. You start to rush towards it and there is a rock in your way. You stumble on it as you look down. <sighs> and see a horseshoe rune with scratches beneath it. As you look up and start running towards the huts, you see two additional trees with carvings etched in them. You could take a moment to shout to Eloise with her rifle. And now- I yell the times on the clock in which they are. Nice. Yeah, uh, the rock, uh, well, that's just directly underneath you. But uh, once you turn towards the huts, there is one at uh, 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Perfect. I'm the center of the clock, by the way. I understand. Good. I'm panicked. <laughs> Eloise, what would you like to do? I shoot the shit out of those rocks. Ooh, okay. Well, at least one of them. Okay, you've got the rock that she just tripped over. Uh, let's and two see. trees. Ooh. How many shots have you fired? Because you had six bullets in your gun. You have one, two, three were spent. Okay, so you've got uh, two left. Uh, but maybe you. perhaps you have some more in your handbag. It'll just take you some time to reload. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to shoot these shots. All right. Which one? Uh, are you shooting the rock or the faraway trees? I will go underneath the one um, that is uh, uh, at 11 o'clock. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, 52. 12. Got it. Okay. 52. You, that thing is far away, but you square up, you aim, and you blast and you're a sharp shooter. You can you can shoot quickly. Let's give you a chance to shoot the one at ten o'clock. Okay, ten o'clock. Oh, ninety six. My friend, that's called a fumble. <laughs> Rolling ninety six to one hundred is a fumble. You know, it's sort of like a critical fail on a d twenty. Uh, Poor Evelyn, <laughs> running away, looking around, stumbling on that rock. Is going to need to roll a dodge, please. <gasps> oh, ah! If I shot my best friend who just saved me, I'm never going. I'm going to go in immediately insane. <laughs> With this, oh God, Ruth, it's I'm a not. gun ball. A gun ball. Oh no! <gasps> Did you fumble? 
Um, am I allowed to push? Am I allowed to push? Oh, no. That's a 92 on the die. Honestly, it, it comes from the fact that, roll that you didn't see coming. Ellen, I, can you roll for damage on your gun? It's a D6 no. plus one. <laughs> I would have never guessed that I would have had to watch out because I'm not one of the numbers I yelled. I'm the middle of the clock. <laughs> Nuts. Okay. <laughs> D six for damage, right? Please yeah. be low. Please be low. Please be low. Well, no. <laughs> what is it? Is this an eight. Wait, oh, wait. No, D six. Oh, 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 oh. I see. I see. <laughs> oh, I see. It's two. Okay. Okay. Two plus one. Oh. This is a nice rifle, Evelyn. You take three damage. Okay. Where does she shoot you? So, I was getting ready to crouch onto my knee to start carving out the rock that's in front of me. And as I'm uh, heading down, the, the rifle um, would have missed me if I hadn't bent down and it hits me, grazes most of my shoulder because I go from seven health from my previous injury a lot three down to three no what one two three no i'm at a four i'm at a four health what is your starting health i don't remember um can, can you remind me what the macros to um determine yeah, what it is uh constitution plus size divided by 10 constitute so it's 45 plus 25 divided by 10. is that what you just 70, said uh Yes, so you have seven hit points to start. Does that seem right? Whatever. Oh, oh my gosh, you're right, because I healed myself at the library. I, or, I only have seven health. Dang you, childhood illness. <laughs> my weak constitution. <laughs> this is why I don't leave the house. I shot my sick friend. <laughs> oh, dear. That is blood. So oh. you've lost three, which is not half of your total HP. No. You don't need to roll for constitution. Uh. You are in terrible pain. Uh. It's okay. Uh. Evelyn, I'm sorry. I've got hooch in my bag, and we will just pour it right on everything, including down your throat, and you'll be fine. You can... I told you it's illegal. <laughs> Now you just just hold there, darling, and 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 I will come and bandage you up. I'll come and bandage you up. I'll come and bandage you up. <gasps> oh wow. Okay, okay, but let me mark that you did indeed. Uh, the one that was. Oh, let's see. It was. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The rock has not been scratched up. The furthest away creature is the one that you exploded at the twelve o'clock. There. Uh, there's still the one that is. There's still a couple, and the one that has reformed itself is coming back together nicely. But, Ruth, you've been insane for a moment. So let's let you take an opportunity to collect yourself. You oh, Evelyn! <laughs> oh, but, Eloise, actually, you got to roll for sanity. Sorry. <gasps> you just shot your friend, and that was a lot. Yeah, that You that hate tracks. blood. You are deathly afraid of blood. I am. Okay, roll for sanity. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> 87. I have way too much enjoyment. When you guys roll badly, I'm so sorry. Please, uh, it's it's only going to be a D3. Let me let me do that for you. We got two sanity loss, Eloise. That was not for you to watch. You feel vile after that. Uh, shooting your dear friend, Evelyn, and watching her shoulder uh, viscera start to, I guess viscera's guts, you know, guts. Ruth, what's up? It's probably a bit of fashion and all that stuff. All right, and I don't know exactly what just happened, but I know I'm about tired of this, and oh my God, Evelyn, your shoulder, what happened? It was an accident. It was an accident. Help! You're okay. You're not okay. Where is Abigail? All right. All right. I'm here. I'm in. I'm out of. I'm out of the mud. 
Ah, oh, nice. He just Great. punched the thing and knocked its mask off. I, mind, I knocked Evil's mask off. Well, look, you got Moxie, kid. Okay, okay. Max. There's two left and they're not close, right? Uh, let's see, there's a creature right next to you starting to reform in the mud. Evelyn uh, had bent down to scratch on the rock that she just tripped upon when she was shot. There's the one that uh, pulled Eloise down into the water and is now near you in the tree above your head. And then there's the one Abigail just punched. So there's three that still exist and there's three runes possibly corresponding. All right. Uh... I'm gonna try to hold them off. Uh, the two of them are, are right by me. So what I would love to do is jump up and grab the one that's in the tree and ideally yank it down. Awesome, okay. I think that's gonna be a brawl. How much luck am I allowed to spend? 10, I believe. 10 is the house rule. Technically there is no limit. What about, say, 12? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll be nice since Eloise just shot Evelyn. <laughs> yes, you may spend 12 luck. Uh, mm -hmm. But someday your luck will run out, kid. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, you, you might want it because uh, this thing is angry. And it just succeeded in, in fighting back. See about that. Edge goes to me as the aggressor, right? Uh, it it does. It does. Um, you know what? It was actually just dodging your attack. Uh, it was okay. swinging from the tree. It just kicked, and it widely missed, uh, or, or uh, did not get caught by you. So you don't have to spend the luck. We'll say you failed that one. Uh, let's. But it's coming for you now, Ruth. It's swinging back around. It's gaining momentum. You reached to grab it, and it was too quick. It moved out of the way, and now its momentum was too much. You were able to jump out of the way. Let's see. There's the one next to you, Abigail. I'm going to need you to roll. And would you like to fight back or dodge, Abigail? Oh, I'd like to this one you just knocked the mask off of. I'd like to fight back. So okay. Scary with the moss face. Yeah, it's just moss. We call it moss face now. Moss face. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to roll and I'm going to get something great. I'm going to get something amazing. I'm going to get a... 88. <laughs> oh. Okay. Unfortunately, um, it's There's no extra die on this one, right? No? Uh, no, you could spend luck, but I think that's a lot of luck to spend. Abigail. So much luck. It's so you expensive. You knocked off its mask. That's part of its identity as this wilderness creature that it is. It is so angry. It mimics exactly what it just saw you do. And as you swing, you knock off its its perfect porcelain mask made made of stone. It sh it shattered as it flew away, and it comes back at you with a mighty punch, and you take five damage. Ah! Oh, oh moss face! You've got to <laughs> swing, moss face. What was your starting health? The oh, HP? it was a uh, health HP HP. Hold on, it's a little number yeah, everywhere. You started with nine. So five is more than half. Can you please roll oh, for constitution? Oh boy. Wait, I don't got, really? You might pass out. Oh, I see it over there. Okay, I got a nine. So nine minus five, that's a four. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to roll for something. What do I use? A 100? D100 roll for constitution, which okay. is five. Um, I just rolled a 28. Excellent. All right, you wob. This thing punched you so hard, 
in square in your jaw the same way you punched it. It doesn't know anything to do but to mirror. You can tell it doesn't think quite like a human might. And that's why it doesn't see as Evelyn scratches the rock in below you, as Eloise re uh, adjusts her, her uh, weapon and aims for that tree at 10 o'clock and shoots. And you know what? There was, that is all of these wilderness creatures. You breathe. You all take a sigh of relief. Most of you, all of you have taken significant damage here on this island when you just came to find out a thing or two about a wizard. Or None of you are not are too pleased about how this has been going so far. And as you take a moment to collect your thoughts and feelings and to start to, I assume, walk towards these in the middle of the island, we're gonna take a five minute break so our players can get a drink of water and run to the ladies room and we will be back in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Gina, I'm sorry.
Hey everybody, welcome back. You're watching the Calyx and we have some incredible players here that have just survived a none too easy fight with some uh, rather horrendous creatures in the muck and the mud of the swamps of Ipswich. Uh, let's welcome back our players. Hey, okay. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Better now after clothing change. Ooh, that is... Oh, uh, Eloise always keeps a change of clothes in her bag. Absolutely, Brilliant. she does. Yes, that definitely <laughs> happened. Just in order of operations, she shot her friend, changed Can her change? clothes, and then came to help. <laughs> it, Absolutely. Well, um, I think it's more of um, Eldelin knows that you wouldn't be much help because you'd have to touch a lot of blood and fascia and muscle tissue, and that's probably not the best thing for you. And considering that I am a doctor, well, I have the knowledge of a doctor without the degree, so I um, I would probably bandage myself while you changed. <laughs> and I will be here as my glamorous moral support. Honestly, your diamonds are giving me life, so. <laughs> sure, you do Literally. have a moment here. Do you want to give yourself some first aid or medicine, Please. Evelyn? Yes, uh, I would. FYI, just state the obvious. We're just waiting on Steph. She may have technical issues. We'll have her back in just a sec. No worries. But as the dust settles or the moss and muck, as it were, and you guys successfully destroyed the runes, uh, describe to me what you'd like to do. Fix my missing shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give me a roll. Okay. Um, would you would you say that this is more first aid or medicine? Because medicine's more diagnosis, but. We know what caused it. Ha <laughs> ha, again. Oh. So. <laughs> the maximum you can heal with first aid is just one HP. So if you would oh. like to, uh, you can roll for medicine. And if you succeed, you can roll 1d3 to heal. All right, can well, then this is more. Maybe oh. um, some hooch in my purse for some luck or for some stability. Sanitation. Sanitation. I think with medicine, is uh, surgery would perhaps be included in that. Yeah. And uh, you could maybe pull out a suture, as you've already done got one. since before the last time you slept. Yeah. I've got a med kit on me. So, um, yeah, this is like light surgery. Oh, boy. Um, so, yes, I would like to pour a little bit of the um, liquor on my arm. This is scandalous, but oh my, <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of it. First time in at least, what, six years. Oh, wow. Um, the last so, time I was there, you danced on a table. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that, Elvis. I'm just trying to distract you from all the <laughs> Hello, I'm just Abigail. Saying we got her back. <laughs> hey, okay. my, my, my thing all forced good. quit me. Sorry, Evelyn is uh, just healing herself. Just okay. doing a bit of light surgery, I say, while biting a piece of like my shirt. It's just yeah. What what do I roll for? Um, what is it again? Just medicine. D six. No, I oh, meant. Um, sorry, you succeeded. Yes, it's a, it's a D I, it's a D three of healing. So roll a D six. Uh, actually, what was your medicine score? If it was an extreme success, I'll let you just take the three HP. I I forgot to roll, and my I only have one set at the. Um, I can roll for you. Thank you, because it rolled all the way across the room, and I feel so weird getting up from the stream. <laughs> you can, you can, if you need your dice. Uh, sorry, were you rolling for your D one hundred or your D your? Um... That would that would have been the D one hundred. Yes. Okay. I want to know the answer before I untether. Hold on. Is it? You're like way too it? rattled. I'll let you get up and roll since I failed both those real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I don't think they should count. I don't think they should count. Your friend shot Ouch. you. That's too Ouch. much. Doing better. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ruth, you've had quite an evening. Um, as you get up and look around the swamp, you see the trees. You look between them and you see three huts. Yeah. They're sort of lean twos. Uh, you could take a moment to help your friends pick up anything you guys might have dropped, or you can go around and look, take a look at them, whatever you'd like to do. I think we've lost your audio. Me? Oh, that's me. me. There we go. Um, sorry. I, I've got a little touch of first aid. Uh, if, if anybody needs some patching up. Yeah, you can well, perform it on yourself or anybody else. Seems everybody could use it. I, I most certainly could use it, but I, I think other people could use it more. 
Mm-hmm. How about everybody rolls uh, for their own first aid, and you can go ahead and take one point of HP if you succeed. Evelyn, did you fail your medicine check? Yeah. Okay. Well, should yeah. I? Should I? What happened I was lose, I can't lose a patient. I'm the patient. <laughs> yes, you can punch, but uh, that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Eloise is starting to explore. Evelyn is pushing her medicine roll. Uh, Ruth and Abigail are each administering some first aid to their own selves. I made yeah. it worse. <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, I, I just did a 61, but okay. I, you know, yeah. I was going for like a 40. I yeah, you don't really have any. Yeah, you, you, you're in such a state of mind, you forget to ask Evelyn to use what's in her medical bag, and you just oh. start to blot at your wounds and then give up. A more Eloise. will help. Oh, Evelyn, did you your push roll? You I, 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 I was waiting. I was waiting. I oh, didn't. great. <clears throat> I am spending 10 luck. Oh, I can I? I can't for a push, right? Not for a push roll. No. Oh, I cut it. I cut something bad. I cut something bad. Um, I think I think it's time to to tell you all. Oops, <laughs> I'm left-handed, so I'm doing this surgery with my non-dominant hand. And oh, oh, that doesn't feel good. <gasps> all right. Um, <laughs> what does that mean when you when you when you fail when you fail push? What does that do to you? There's a consequence of some kind. Uh, what might you have done uh, that didn't go well when you're performing surgery on yourself? I feel like the options are I mean, uh, limited. I imagine there's a lot of tendons you don't want to accidentally cut. What? You know what I think happened? What? You spilled a lot of blood onto your precious book of rituals. Oh, that's probably a lot less visceral than the other option. Yeah. Uh, all all of the pages that you were looking at with these sorts of symbols, they're they're unreadable now. Sorry. Eloise. Library ain't getting that one I back. Passed, I passed my health check, but can I give that somehow to Evelyn? I just feel so bad. Sure. My best friend. You you went over it, you you shot her and you wanted you rolled for first aid and Yes, and I Okay, perfect. It. Evelyn, you can heal one HP. Oh, oh, all right. You, you you got near the blood. I should roll for sanity. Thank oh, you, you should. You should. <laughs> hmm. Can no. you kill that roll? Can you roll a, 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 this is just for blood. So we'll have it be, a, oh, D2. One damage, please. Uh, one sanity loss. One sanity, okay. Yeah, Oof. you just, uh, you cringe, but it, it does feel better to know that you're helping your friend, even though you were the one that shot her in the shoulder. I, I am the fireman that started the fire and didn't even really put it out all the way, and now there's blood on my hands, and literally and figuratively. Eloise, 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 take it down, take it down. Oh. <laughs> You're fine. I look like a rock sometimes. It's 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 okay. You know, I I have a lot of gray. I wear a lot of muted clothing. You know, so anyone anyone could have made the mistake. You it's are so strong. You're so strong. You are my best friend. And when we get out of here, I am buying you a whole new wardrobe. And I'm <gasps> taking you out on the town. And I don't care what you say. You are going to live. And you are going to get drunk, and you are going to dance on a table again, and we're going to have a great time, okay? Okay. I'm going to dance on a table again. Yes. I want to hear more about this, by the way. <laughs> there were tassels involved. There it was tassels, a magical night. Tassels. What would you all like to do now? <laughs> what? Three hundred. You want to finish that thought? Okay. Uh, Oh, should right. we tell a story right now? Is now the time we tell a story? Um, Evelyn. If it makes you feel good. She just graduated. And <laughs> she wanted to just go back to reading her books, which is what Evelyn does. She didn't feel like celebrating. But I said, yeah. no, you don't. You smart cookie. Yeah. I'm going to take you out. And this was pre-prohibition. Yeah. And so we went out dancing. We did yeah. the Charleston. We did the... 
Lindy Hop. We did all of the dances that are of the time. And I ordered a bunch of punch. Who knew that that meant liquor? And you know what it did? And uh, before you know it, she was gifted some tassels yeah. by a passing floozy who just loved her style. Oh. And she put those tassels on right then and there and she got on that table and she said my name is evelyn and i am smart and i just graduated and she shook all of her stuff around and it was a sight to behold and that was the last time she went out until the time which will be very very soon after we survive all of this i made two dollars in tips <laughs> she did Woo! that's not bad it was a really it was a long night there was a lot of dancing well, Speaking of I a long night, we all live long enough to get there. <laughs> May we didn't. all wear tassels again. <laughs> you all worked hard to fight you your way through these moss <laughs> monsters. Uh, and now you are on the island that you came seeking to find the Marsh Wizard. What would you like to do? Would you like to go looking around the island? Does one of the huts look like a residence? Uh, sure. You look around, you start walking towards the center of them. There's three huts, in fact. And as you sort of peek around, you'll notice that there are, they're patched together, thatched roofs made up of the branches of the trees around you. And they're all lean tooths. They're all missing their, their, uh, westerly wall. They're just three walled structures, really not a pleasant looking place to live. One of them has, uh, uh, among all sorts of assorted junk, there's a cooler and a little fire pit and um, a, a tripod above the fire pit. There's one that has a workbench with many vials. And then there's one that just has a junk with an area made of leaves that almost looks like a the saddest excuse for a bed you've ever seen. It just is layers upon layers of stinking foul leaves piled up. Uh, and in the midst of it all, there's a corpse. <gasps> there's an old man's body with long gray hair, a thin sickly looking man that is frozen in a, a terrified and yet calm expression. His eyes are wide, but something about them looks peaceful and resigned. And I need all of you to roll for sanity, please. Not a bloody death, right? It's our, it's a, you don't see, uh, oh, you, there's, there's blood. It's been here uh, at least a day and a half, I'd say. Of course there is rot. There's blood. Yeah, yeah, right. What's that gonna do to me? Mm. Well, I failed anyways. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, anybody who fails, please just just a D3 of damage, if you would. So D6. <laughs> I got that three. would be three points of sanity. It's well. hard. You were in all this way looking for the marsh wizard and now you see this corpse with this graying hair and a big gouge in its chest. Uh, there Ouch. is. Uh, it looks as if some large uh, clawed fist has just scooped out what was in the middle. Anybody can go around and investigate anything you'd like after you take that sanity damage. Uh, a meta question, 1d6 mm -hmm. roll, do we do anything to the d6 or is just, it's whatever we roll for this for damage? It's actually just d3. This corpse is already dead. You know, you've seen a lot of blood and guts. It doesn't make it easier, but just d3 of damage. So whatever your d6 is, divide it in half and then we'll round up. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of um, riding a high, a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Um, so this 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 body is not scaring me at all. I've seen many a cadaver. So um, especially since I didn't witness this one's death, way easier. Um, and this one has quite a pleasant face. So um, I would like to um, sort of examine the body, and 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 it sounds like he he's only been dead exactly one day. And whoopsie do, it sounds like his pet got out after his death, <laughs> or caused it. 
How oh. right you might be. Uh, do you, you are That's more true. than welcome to examine the corpse. I'd love to examine the body. Okay, whatever you want. If you have a biology or um, would this a not be a, uh, oh, or I've medicine? Medicine is kind sure. of my. Um, I would I accept an argument for any of those. Okay, because I, yeah, I don't think chemistry would really help me right now. Um, uh oh, technical difficulties for Steph again. Oh, sure fourteen. Where did she go? Ooh, <laughs> is that a hard she success? She made another stealth roll. I don't know. Uh, She's in the mud. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. I haven't done the 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 thing. Wait for it. One. Don't worry. I'll tell you what you see. Ooh, that's exciting. I'm sorry. Right, you tell me how good it is, but. Bam. In your hand, you see, uh, you examine the body, and it is no. a graphic, horrific wound. You do recognize the sort of shape of the uh, incision where it looks like that creature you saw before. You do like recognize the, the similarities. Uh, well, more like when you saw Carl Bryden's head ripped off and Alfred Hackett's chest ripped out. It, it's a similar chest ripping out situation. Oh. Um, and in which you can only assume is the Marsh Wizard's uh, dead hand, gripped tightly as rigor mortis has set in, is a whistle. Oh, no. A small whistle that's okay. been carved of a white material. Uh, and w was that a hard success for you? That Gina? was indeed a hard success, not an extreme success, which is the best one, correct? Right. Yes. Correct. Uh, but you do recognize the material this whistle is made out of uh, with your extensive knowledge of medicine, and it is definitely made of human bone. Oh, well, well, mm -hmm. well. Um, just gonna, just gonna take that, right, um, is, yep, gross, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, you, you gotta pry it out of his yeah. fingers, it kind of snap back as you pull it out. Ugh. <laughs> um, you got what it, What the rest you of you it. like to do? Well, it looks like we've got a dragon whistle. I, don't I know think we should go. We've, this is the thing that we are here for, and I think that we should go and 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 go and get back to the car and and maybe change clothes again and <laughs> get some alcohol. And we have we have the thing, right? We have the thing that we need. Evelyn, should we smash all of the fancy glasses or or keep them? Is this a smash or a keep scenario? Um. Well, these are probably ingredients to cast rituals, so it, I don't want them. Smash it is! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, Ruth, you're going to smash all uh, in the workshop bench hut. You're going in and you're smashing everything. Uh, great. Sure. Yeah, give me a strength check. Uh, and is anybody else doing anything? Eloise? Oh, my strength is terrible. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Excellent. Eloise has poured herself a drink. Somehow she had a, a, a bag full of ingredients. She's changed into her evening kimono. I, I just, I'm here. If you need me, I'm just going to look away from the blood. And, and Evelyn, um, yeah. whatever you need, uh, I'm here for you. And, and Ruth, of course. And it if Try you not could... to shoot anybody. I, are you oh. smashing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I actually reload my gun? <laughs> Absolutely. You can reload your gun and get six bullets back in it. Ruth, can you please roll for luck? <laughs> can Can I also roll for sanity at the sound of the gun reloading? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a particular phobia that you have around guns? I was just shot with oh. it. Sure, I man. would imagine that that's sanity. probably a little bit unnerving. <laughs> yeah, please, please roll for sanity. Especially one under. You got luck? Uh, one under my luck. Excellent. Ruth, you are smashing. You find vials and bases, all kinds of putrid substance, human and otherwise. Uh, you find lots of bones of cattle and maybe some that are not cattle. Uh, but... In the middle, on the workbench, just in the middle of it all, uh, you're about to smash when you pause. 
and you pick up something off the table that looks uh, like something that your friend Evelyn may have told you about. It has a title that says, To Call and Master uh, the Steed from the Stars. And it is a spell. Uh, let me give you a look see here. Thank you. <laughs> Good. We don't yeah. need the entire spell, but it says to be performed when Aldebaran is above the horizon. This creature can be useful as a bodyguard, soldier, assassin, message carrier, and steed. Called, and its will bound to yours such that it will not balk. Take care in the final steps, lest it strike you down, for unbound it is a most fearsome beast. As you skim ahead, you see uh, a spell that if you utter in full voice and take a dagger with the blood of uh, a maiden no more than 14 summers or a six-month-old unblemished calf, hmm. oh. it seems to be a recipe for a ritual sacrifice. Well, to summon a demon steed. To summon it. Does that's it mention? Very, that's does very it, cool. Does it, <laughs> is there anything in the text about the whistle? Uh, indeed, there is. Uh, let's see. It says. <laughs> spill the blood of one of those two things, spread the crimson over the altar of summoning, and then you want to chant, uh, blow onto your whistle, three blasts and of sound after each recitation, and after some time, the sky will open, and rent from the heavens will descend a star seed. Skipping ahead, fail in this, and your light will... Oh, uh, it says, um, having heard the call of the supplicant, it is impelled to answer... Yet a challenge for the to command its nature. Basically, it says, if you don't bind this thing, it will destroy you. Seems yeah. that uh, the old man in his 300 some odd years might have forgotten step two this time around. Just anyway. out of curiosity, in the bones that I see around here, can I make an educated guess as to whether this one was a calf or a maiden? Uh, I don't want to know you can look around. Can, but, you know. Can you roll for sanity, please, Ruth? I will do that thing. Can you use luck on sanity? No, you can't, Ruth, because this was definitely the bones of a maiden uh in fact its blood was her her blood was spilt rather recently can you please roll a d6 because you see an arm and a dress and some hair but it seems that the rest of the body is not here perhaps it was thrown into the waters of the marsh five yeah, you're going to need to take five sanity loss, and that means you might go temporarily insane if you don't fail this intelligence check. Are you going to convince yourself that you don't know what it is, and this might still be a calf with long blonde hair? <laughs> Somehow, yes. <gasps> Excellent. 82. All right, sometimes naivety can keep you from squawking like a bird for the rest of the night. <laughs> Excellent. Is there anything else that anybody else would like to do? Yeah. Uh, or do you have a plan? Um, well, um, I would like to look around the room for the bone dagger that is required for this ritual. Excellent. Uh, okay. Can you give me a spot hidden check? Yes. Um, oh! Oh, 24. Yes, I succeed. Excellent. It's actually, uh, doesn't matter what kind of weapon. You just need your special bone whistle and you oh. need to, uh, you need to sacrifice a, um, either a maiden or a calf. But what you do find with that incredible spot hidden roll is you find a small, notebook. Many of the pages have been ripped out. There's only a few pages left and hidden in one of them 
you find a note from perhaps, and you can only assume the marsh wizard. Creature does not always complete task, sometimes not necessary. Dismiss it. Uh, would you take over reading for me, Evelyn? Um, yes. Uh, dismiss it with ik, etha, yon, nay, by yek, he, ketha, ketha, me. Three times said I must work on the pronunciation. We'll, we'll give it a, a, a second go around again. After third, draw blade from under left eye straight down to right left jaw line line and leave 13 drops of blood from the wound in the bowl take the blood into your mouth ho okay and spray it into the creature's face from my from your mouth so you mm. spit at the creature from okay um and while saying kathame so a bit of a kathame um it will then be forced back to the stars. We have the banishment ritual, but someone's got to eat blood and then spit it at a demon horse. Fine. <laughs> I'm okay with the eating of the blood, but not the, the spitting of it. It's actually quite dangerous to do. This blood, we don't know how long it's been there, and I don't, it's really not good to consume. A, d, 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 no, um, well, the germs are probably actually, gone. Actually, Evelyn, at your feet, you were right. Uh, there is a dagger sitting at your feet. Uh, dripping in blood, aside from the arm that Ruth just found. But, I don't know, Calf. you don't have to take a look at that if you don't it looks specifically. weirdly like an arm, but it's, it's a cow. There's still blood on it? There's maybe, still blood on it. Maybe maybe the maybe the leftover um, blood can just get like a do-over with like a quick tap, tap, tap into them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually, um, to look once more... Upon the uh, uh, X in the air, but let's look at this spell one more time. I believe that the blood to bind it or to send it back can be your own. From elbow to wrist, let three drops fall of blood to the ground oh. and other. Uh, once it's completed its task after being bound, but you found the note from the wizard saying, maybe there's another way to get rid of it. And I can show you that again. Of course you take it with you, I assume. Yes. Okay. What would you like to do? Do we got to find it? You um, have been in this marsh for many hours. You have been fighting these creatures, which Evelyn saw in her book before it was covered in blood, were called uh, wilderness paramentals. And um, yeah, you, you, the sun is uh, definitely well past noon at this point in time. Um, you remember... Eloise's driver was sitting out on the road. Hopefully he got a little cat nap in. You can do whatever you like. Um, I see we should probably just do the quick, quick as a flash. Um, do this in a slightly more contained area. Um, then out in the open covered in ichor. Um, you do need to see the creature in order to banish it, it seems, from your reading of these spells. Mm. Do we think the other eggs are still at Enid's? Yeah, probably. Oh, I would love to go back to Enid's. I would just love that. So I, that sounds oh. like a good plan. Yeah, why don't that's we go back to Enid's and we can have a drink? <laughs> Construction site. Maybe we can yes. get everybody to clear out. We can talk to the <laughs> Jeffrey Loganthal again. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. I think the mo the more people we keep out of this, probably the better. But it's a great idea to go back to Enid's because we can contain the creature in the in the wine cellar if we have to. And Abigail can get him to leave. She can sweet talk that guy. Oh, I'm so good at it. You have a good relationship with him. Oh. So let's do that. Let's Excellent. Do that. All right. Uh, you wade your way back out of the swamp and head into the student baker. Baker, uh, Albert is there waiting. He's roused by one of your poking and prodding of him. And you hop back in. You're actually only a few minutes away from the construction site. It was quite near the salt marsh. As you pull up, you see the stone structure of this mansion with its round drive in front. And you see lots of police cars and police tape 
around the scaffolding on the front of the house. Oh, no. oh. Evelyn? Yeah. Does she, have does she uh, uh, does Wait. Enid know that we are coming? You have we no, but you, you called her last night and you told her to get at, to stay away and to be safe and to make sure that they're secure. I believe she called the police. Maybe oh. this is just that barricade. Maybe this is just that. Okay, Enid. Um, Enid. I call out to Enid. Sure. As you pile out of the vehicle, you you see Enid. She's there in a red maroon dressing robe, her hair still in curlers. My dear. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Darling, we've, we've come with news and listen, I just, um, I have news. Do you see all this? Well, you called the police, I assume? Oh, the police came all right. I sent them and then they dragged me down here. There, there's bodies. There's bodies right here. Three of my men, three dead, dead. The three that I, I posted all night. <laughs> She's, she seems rather upset by- Enid, um, have a drink, my dear. <laughs> oh, I have, let me assure you. Okay, I don't care what time of day it is, this is my third scotch. It calms the nerves. Okay, let me tell you something. You are in danger, my dear. And so what you're going to need to do is just sit with the police, make sure they don't come anywhere near the cellar. My dear friend Evelyn has uh, a way to solve everything and it's best if you knew as little as possible about it. Can you get the police away from us? Uh, 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 can you roll for, uh... yeah, I think uh, it's a pretty easy uh, charm or persuade, but just to see. Okay. Can I use my credit rating instead of charm? Sure. Okay. It's the same. She eyes you up and down and takes in all the mud and muck on your face and legs and feet and boots, even though your rope is impeccable, your kimono. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, fuck, okay. Uh, okay, I got a 63 out of uh, 65. Excellent. My dear, whatever you say, oh my God, just please. I don't even care about any of this anymore. I just want less death. I will do whatever you say. I'll keep them out of your way. Yes, go have a lie Stop. down right here with the police. Not with the police, but take them, take them with you. Sure, you see her go over and talk to the, the, the chief, uh, you assume, or whoever is in charge of the whole police. Uh, and she starts just gesticulating wildly. Get out, get out, as she is <laughs> proud to do. What else would you all like to do? Nicely handled. Just happy to help. I've shot my friend. I, we don't I have to dwell. It's all right. Mm. I'm okay. Look at this. Look. Look. You did stitch You're yourself bleeding. You're still well. bleeding. I mean, I've always wanted to learn to be ambidextrous. And look at this. Oh, bless your positive spirit. But let's um, not look at the blood. And let's, uh, let's go to the basement. I'd like yeah. to, I'd like to, is there anyone else around that I can get some, get some quotes or just to figure it around and see what other people might be thinking? Story. Okay, just, just seeing what they're up to. Well, you do see your old friend, Jeffrey Logenthal, the foreman, looking oh. uh, just worse for wear. Mm. Sure, mm. you want to speak to him? I would love to speak to him. Hello yes. there. Hello there, Jeffrey Logenthal. Oh, darling. You remember me? You you bet your, your gorgeous life. behind I do, but well, we may have to postpone that dinner we talked about. Three of my men are dead. Oh, oh. I chose them, and I, I wanted to give over time to the, the men with families, and so, oh, oh God, I... I no, don't look. You shouldn't trouble your pretty little head. Oh, well, we've got. I'm so sorry to hear about your men and 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 oof, that's just the worst. And and our dinner's postponed. Yeah. Well. I guess. I guess we've got to fight some evil. Me. You, a little lady like you, is gonna fight some evil. Well, I just you mean collectively, ahead. our energies. Sure. Um, 
he he totally commiserates. He puts a hand on your shoulder and he he oh. tells you, uh, uh, "I don't want I don't want you to see any of this. I wish I didn't have to tell you. Don't look at the body that's back by the door of the cellar. That one's most horrific. And and don't look at the ones on the scaffolding. I can't even I can't even look up there. Oh. That's oh my. Um, could you just tell me now what what happened to to make these men die? Die. I wish, uh, I wish I knew, ma'am. I uh, you just don't know. They just, they just, they just pass out, or just have, like they just like dropped, and or they just they some, something something slash. Well, uh, I talked to the officers, and they didn't want to tell me much. But seeing as how these are my men, they told me, uh, they told me that that well, it looks like something picked up the two men on the scaffolding out front, and. And it's as if they were dropped from a great distance. And oh. that's why that's why you see everything just go oh. splat. Oh and my. as you hear this, the rest of you are looking around the front and you did see a corpse lying at the base of the scaffolding and another that has been impaled through it, slid down that they must have been dropped with tremendous force. and. Everybody's gonna need to roll for sanity when you look over and see this. You're still in the front of the house, and that's where the two bodies that have been dropped are. So much blood. Did you know that a human could have that much blood in them? I didn't know that they had that much blood in them. I do not oh, pass. God. Unfortunately. I yeah. pass somehow. <laughs> do not pass. I got a 78. I, you pass because Evelyn at this point is just like Louise. At this point, you have seen more human blood than you probably ever will in your entire life. So, you know what? What's a few more drops? That's, you always have the best words, Evelyn, even when you're bleeding out of your arm. You're right, you're right, you're right. And also I've had three vodka tonics on the drive over. So I'm gonna be okay, I can hold it together. I'm fine. That I'm does fine. help. Okay. I'm struggling a little. Uh, oh. Yeah, can you give me uh, a, it's going to be, let's see, we're back here. Oh my. Uh, yeah, when you see this body, uh, uh, D3 of, of sanity loss. Actually, oof, the carnage of the night watchman is going to be one sanity loss for everyone that sees it, regardless of your failure. So Eloise and Evelyn oh. just lose one. A sanity because this is I mean as horrible as it is you do your speech does help Eloise just keep it keep it there but Ruth one on top of what I roll no uh okay so I I, I believe I got what translates to a three okay yeah that's that's yeah, yeah. it's been it's fine I've seen some things but it's starting to get it's a lot Abigail? Oh, I got a 78, so I don't know. I think I've got to, I think I've got to do the roll and, and I'm going to lose two. So I'm down to a 32. Hmm. Oh, okay. me too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've still got plenty left. <laughs> We're good. Okay, folks. Well, uh, any ideas of what you'd like to do next? Let me get down to that cellar. Sure. Okay, do you all head down to the cellar? Yeah. As you go around the back of the estate, uh, you see, you know, the old fountain of the source of your original woes. And as you turn towards the back of the house, you see the cellar door made of steel. It is locked so tightly. Uh, well, it, it was locked so tightly last night. It looks like the locks have since been removed, but the the cellar door has huge dents and scratches. There's scratches all around the edge of the door as if something was trying to dig below, but couldn't quite get through. Well, well the locks are gone, but it's still closed. Uh, the, the door's closed. It seems to be kind of punched in uh, as if a giant fist had punched into it. Uh, I can, I just need a strength roll from somebody to get this door open. I'm quite strong member of my biceps. I can use my good shoulder. Sure. Okay. Just need one success between any of you to open up the door. Well, oh, that's a 28. 
Excellent. Out of a 70. You fling open this door and head down the steps. Uh, and when you're down there, it looks exactly as it did the night before, untouched. The tools hang on the wall just as before. Uh, and on the workbench where you last saw them are the I, remaining eggs. I knew it. Warmth is the catalyst to make them hatch, and staying in the cellar kept them unborn. That's true. They, they, uh, as you look at them, they seem to be exactly in the same condition they were yesterday. Wow. This first piece of good news we've had in a while. Anybody in here? No, no one's in there. But the light is definitely dimming. There was one tiny window. Actually, the one thing you notice is that the tiny window has been smashed. But it was rather small. Seems like whatever was trying to get in here couldn't get through. Well. Are we going to be able to banish just the babies or are we going to need to find, you know, the mama? Well, um, I, I, it seems that the mama is a little bit more dangerous, but it, it and, and if these stay in a cool environment, they will never hatch, it seems. Or at least more slowly. Um, but at this, well, I don't know, honestly. The <laughs> light seems to be fading rather dramatically through the window. Oh. Dusk and twilight are, approach, uh, are passing as night begins to fall. Oh, <sighs> We need to get everyone on this ground out of here. Because that mama's going to come back. And it seems she strikes at night. You hear a most guttural screech from every direction, it seems. You hear it reverberating down the stairs and through the crashed open window. You hear uh, the men, the policemen, and the, the foremen that are outside scream in panic, and it sounds like people are running and things are falling. You hear car tires screeching as if people are peeling out as quickly as possible. Well, it seems like almost night, so that, that works, that works too. Evie, if you say the words, can one of us do the cutting? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Divide and conquer. Well, yeah, there's only yeah. one way that the beast can enter, right? So let's um, get it, let's get to the other side of the room and... Yeah. Um, Put the eggs just... between us so that yes. it only goes so far and doesn't try to go through us. Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. As you all duck and cower on one side of the room, whistle returns. Oh, as you pull out the human bone whistle, you hear the smashing and of this thing. It, it swoops down. You hear its bat wings and its caw as it comes down and it looms big in the doorway at the top of the stairs. It it starts to smash the wooden steps as it comes down, sort of hops the rest of the way and looks around. What would everyone like to do? Cut the face, eat the blood, say the thing! Do! All right, everyone have a declaration of intent because this thing is not happy. I ready my rifle because I'm not doing the spell and I um, stand between my friends and the beast. Oh, I'm getting Jessica? ready to cut and spit. Oh, you took the dagger. All right. Um, can I reread the instructions to, while, while, while. Absolutely. My intent is to reread the exact wording so as to it, it, it ascertain whether or not I am allowed to say the words or if the person doing the spit blood has to say the words. Oh. Let's see. Um, say the spell three times. After the third, draw the blade from the left eye to the left jawline. There are okay. drops of blood in the bowl. Take the blood in your mouth, spread it in the creature's face while saying, Katame, 
it will then be forced back to the stars. At least that's what the marsh wizard wrote. Oh, okay. I need a bowl. <sighs> okay. Um. Okay. Uh, anyone want to do anything? Um, I'm going to be saying the spell uh, three times as long as I have made the confirmation that Ruth has found a bowl. Yeah, Abigail, do you see anything that looks like a bowl? Ab Steph? I don't know. <laughs> cool. Uh, Ruth, Ruth or anybody give me a spot hidden to see if you see uh, anything. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll roll to see if I see anything. Sure. Okay. I roll a, uh, a oh, 13. Oh. I think Ooh. that's below your starting spot hidden. That's a success. All right. Uh, you turn around and on the workshelves behind you, yes, there's many things. There's all kinds of instruments. There's, uh, there's a bucket on the bottom shelf and you grab it. It's, it's full of a mop head and some other rags. You can dump oh. it out. Okay, I got a bowl. It was full of uh, cleaning supplies. So perfect to clean out the evil. Sure. Great job, Abigail. Um, I um, is is the creature advancing on us at all? It looks around and starts to assess everything. It looks like it recognizes Abigail especially and takes a large step oh. towards her. It oh. remembers the feel of a certain lamp, and then it turns, and its giant mouth opens wide as it snaps towards Eloise, seeing the right. rifle pointed at it that you can still see the, the eye core dripping from its shoulder below its wing where Eloise shot it the night before. Yeah, it's very disgusting. Thank you for reminding me. I fire a warning shot. <gasps> just to get it off, it's off uh, just to stop him from advancing a little bit because it's already been injured. Where do you shoot? At the ground, right below it. Into his head. Into his <laughs> <laughs> he had it coming. Coming. <laughs> he had it coming. Um, <laughs> he babies here on Earth. <laughs> Squish. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I, uh, I'll consult my friends. Should I? Should I just do a warning shot? Should I not shoot? Should I? Sure sh you said you fire a warning shot. Okay, I fire and in a warning shot. Dexterity order. A, fi a rifle goes before anything else. Maybe I wasn't playing with that rule earlier, but it is technically a rule. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so you fire that warning shot into the ground. Can you give me a firearms roll to see if it does indeed go into the ground and not on anything else? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll give you a bonus die because it shouldn't be too difficult. Right. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. <gasps> <laughs> oh, First Emily. Point. What? Yep, second roll was ninety nine. No, oh, ninety nine. That's Do I get shot now again? Doesn't count as a fumble because you got to choose the better, and technically it's a ninety eight because you only get to reroll the tens die. But that's pretty awful. Okay. The creature <laughs> spreads its wings in a threatening gesture that fills the entire room. The the lamps that was on the table is knocked off and shattered. Sparks fly. And you see it's starting to just step towards the eggs. It seemed as though that's all it had come here for. But when a shot is fired, the shrapnel shoots up bits, shards of the floor, spray onto this thing. And you have a D6 plus one? Oh gosh. Okay, yeah. Uh... It doesn't like that. It it got one piece of the shrapnel of the cement floor cuts into its face and it steps close to you, Eloise. I uh, meant to do that and don't come near my friends. Oh, oh no. It is going to, um, hmm. Hmm. It is going to swipe its claw at you. But it rolled a 99. <laughs> oh! Do I fail Does upwards? It fumble? 
<laughs> oh, let's see. That does not go well for it. It swipes its claw, and and uh, there was some sort of cleaning liquid on the shelf that it swiped into. It pours acid onto the tip <gasps> of its own uh, own um, wing. Who keeps acid in a wine cellar? You would think it would uh, not be the typical thing to do. Um, yeah. I mean. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see. Now, Abigail, you uh, have an opportunity to act. I am going to act. Great. Uh, well, you you found uh, you you were finding the bowl. I found her. the bowl. Yeah, you even found a smaller bowl, a decorative bowl that had been on the shelf, and, and or you a different it. one, double yeah. bowl, besides okay. the map. Bowl. Okay. okay, Evelyn. Yes, um, I'm, I'm saying the words, I, I don't remember what they are. They're Absolutely, no worries, no worries. <laughs> okay. You pull up your sheet uh, of paper. Okay, here, beautiful. Here, I'm going to take a screenshot of it so that I don't forget it. Um, it, it says... I'll type it for you. It's Kathayahan and Bayeki Kathayme. Ike... Thank you. When you say Piyaki, you see this thing's head jerk towards you oh. uh, with an inquisitive sort of look. Um, uh, like, Katha, Yan, Ne, Piyaki, Katha, Me, Ik, Katha, Yan, Ne, Piyaki, Katha, Me. All right. Cut! Ruth, it's your turn to act. And I draw the bone dagger from my lower left corner of the eye down towards the jaw and try to catch it in the decorative bowl. Abigail, if you can help hold that for me. That I will. Be I'm going to do it. I'm going uh, to hold it. And try to catch 10, exactly 10, 11, 11, 12, 13 drops. And then lift it to my lips. Evelyn. Can you roll for power? Oh, yes. Oh, that's not, I'm not Evelyn. I'm very no. confused. Uh, Sorry. 40, that's a success. Okay, excellent. How, how big of a success did you have? Just a, uh, a, a 42 and, um, and my power is 60. Okay, excellent. You had a success, and Ruth, uh, I'm, I'm, you cut yourself. Uh, we'll make you assess your damage in just a moment, but there is definitely drops of blood spilling into this bowl. With the power that is vested in me, I yell at Ruth, um, you have to say, Kathame! As uh, as you say that, and and when you said the finer word of the ritual, Evelyn, uh, right before Ruth started cutting, you felt a hum of energy and power emanating from all over your body. The whole room seems to have sort of a blue glimmer to it. Ruth, what do you do? That's the sound of me spinning on the creature with a kazami. Excellent. I am not looking at this part. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look away in the face of horror. Uh, but this spray of blood that was intentional from your friend, after all the blood you've seen, doesn't cause you to need to roll for sanity. And you all were preparing, embracing to see this creature here. This is what you wanted. As you do that, the creature squeaks squawks, pulls back its wings, reaches down and grabs the eggs from the workbench as a rift in what seems like the air splits behind it. It opens wide. You see lightning shocks and then space, the void of space. You see stars. You each feel sort of vacuum pull you forward. Each of you takes a half step forward towards this rift you've created. And this creature with its terrible size starts to just step backwards and disappear into nothingness. You see it flying there in this rift in front of you for a moment. 
with its eggs under one hand. And that's when you notice down, uh, uh, it has one arm cradling the infant that you helped birth that's latched onto its teeth. You notice right before the rift closes. It has a teat? It's got it is many teats. I thought it laid eggs. <laughs> this is a mythical creature that came from a different realm. I don't I think the same biology rules apply. Don't not feel comfortable with that. Oh, for some reason that's worse than the blood. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> investigators. You have successfully returned all of the young to the mother Biaki. Oh. <laughs> bravo, bravo, you know, it got a little iffy there, Eloise, with you firing that rifle. It just came for its babies. Oh. And yeah, uh, I, I'm not a gun no. shooter in real life, and I think Eloise will never pick up or fire another gun ever again. <laughs> but you, you know, know what we will do? Don some tassels. Ooh, yeah, these okay, ladies are ready for their night on the town. All right, uh, before I we can, give everyone a little a scar, epilogue, right? Sorry, I can pull off a scar, right? Yes, it looks great. Oh, yeah. yeah, you and I are gonna just be so so attractive. Like our 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 beauty scale just poof way up. <laughs> All those chicks are gonna little. dig us. <laughs> all of them. Would you all like to know your rewards? Yeah. Well, when you explain the story to Enid, naturally she gives each of you the $20 that was promised, plus a tip on top of that for promising that her workers will be safe and her construction will go on as planned. Also, everyone, uh, you all figured out that this was just a case of a mother separated from her children. Naturally, uh, you've put together that when the dotty old wizard summoned this creature from beyond to do his bidding and completely forgot to bind it to his will, she just happened to be pregnant. She flew until she found uh, some nice clean water nearby and laid her little eggs, but she was so wiped of ma magical energy from being summoned and giving birth, she couldn't go back into the void of space with them at that time. She had to come back for them. And then of course they were locked up when she did. Uh, so you all get plus one D three of sanity for figuring out exactly what the situation was. Uh, you left the eggs out for the mother to claim them. And that's gonna be an additional one D eight of sanity for each of you. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Uh, and and is, it, is this on to our current total or the original starting total? Oh, your current total. Oh, okay. really? Are we, we sure about that? Yeah, it's how okay, Santa you works with Call of Cthulhu. Can you repeat the die again? <laughs> yeah, you get a 1d3 and a 1d8. 1d8. To add to your sanity score. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and you get the <laughs> knowledge. Seven. That's pretty great. Yeah. Oh. And you get the knowledge okay. that you have helped reunite this creature with her young. So congratulations. Uh, everyone that missed us mentioned that last time, this was from Doors to Darkness, from uh, Call of Cthulhu, from Chaosium. And it's called Ties That Bind. Tom Lynch is the writer of this scenario. And we went pretty by the book. Um, that all, was all in there. And of course, we had the beautiful illustrations that are in the book as well. So um, can I get a little epilogue from everyone of what their character does next? Let's start with Eloise. Whitney? <laughs> Well, taking the $20 and the tip and also the fact that I'm very rich, I continue to go about my life. Um, I swear to never shoot ever again, but I take all of my friends, new and old, I take them shopping and I take them dancing and I say, let's drink away this nightmare, friends. Let's never talk of it again. Of course, that does become untrue because I bear several children and then grandchildren and then I'll never shut up about it to my grandkids. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Evelyn? Um, well, uh, Evelyn 
basically, she also already sort of has a wealth um, of her own, so she donates her twenty dollars to the to the to the family members of the three men that were killed on 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 the premises. Um, and then she does write several books detailing the the events that happened tonight, and um, she becomes a very successful writer. But the thing is. She published them as factual, but she became a smash sensation writing a thing called science fiction. And, um, and, uh, and, and that is what she did into her old age. And, um, and she continued to, well, not be afraid anymore because at that point she had almost died two times in her life. And, and that sort of shook her and she realized, I gotta get out there. And so every story she published from that point on, was a true story from her adventure, maybe juiced up a little, but um, but all true stories penned as 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 fiction, and yes, um, she did donate to several libraries all of her books. So yes, <laughs> Top payback, but the, but, the, but the good kind. Absolutely, Ruth. Well, I I Evelyn, I'm I'm thinking you might need a partner for some of those adventures. Love to. Uh, because I, look, I love to find missing stuff. I love to take down corrupt bureaucrats. I have always had it in for fat cats, taking advantage of people, but I didn't know that one of the options was a crazy old man summoning monsters from outer space to take innocent young calves and or girls and so havoc. So this adventure lights in me the quest to take my mystery solving to literally another level, uh, to try to handle bigger mysteries, weirder mysteries for as long as I can. And if I'm very, very lucky, I will get to tease Eloise and her grandkids someday, but mm, I don't know how long we're making it. It'll be good <laughs> when, I, when we go out though. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, and Abigail. Oh, I write the greatest story of all time and I publish it in the paper. And then I go home and I tell Ned, Fred, and Ted, but especially Fred, that he's not alone. And I think he felt very understood by the story and the writing. And he stopped being so, so not here. He started being more here. Beautiful. Uh, also, big, big thanks, Jake. Uh, I'm gonna bring you into the screen there. Big thanks to Jake Michaels. Yeah, that's right. Unmuted. Unmuted. No, I didn't want this. Yeah. Thanks so much again for uh, being our speaker behind the scenes. Oh, you must. You. All right, everybody. Thanks so much uh, for hanging out with us all night. Um, please check in the description below. You can find everybody's social media. Uh, bye, Jake. Thanks so much. <laughs> and um, if everybody just wants to get a quick, quick shout out of where people can find you, uh, and then, uh, and then we'll let you off into the the horrific night. Uh, Steph, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Steph Woodburn. Gina. You can find me on most of the internet locations at Pocket Gina. And if you're so inclined and want to just look at random photos on an Instagram, you can go to Kitty Hawk. That's K I T T I Hawk. Um, and there you go. Amy. I'm Enthusi Amy everywhere. Thank you so much for having us. This was so much fun. Oh, uh, it was my pleasure. <sighs> Whitney. Hey, you can find me at Whitney S. Moore on Instagram uh, and uh, check out tomorrow because I'm DJing some metal music. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Ooh, on Instagram. Oh, sorry. That's giant on everyone's head. But uh, thanks. Oh, hello. Hey, we got our We're yeah. here tonight. Thanks, everybody. I'm Becca Scott, and you can find me right here wherever you are. Here's where I am all the time. Uh, <laughs> love you guys. Thank you so much for being my guinea pigs of the Calyx's first run. This has been an absolute pleasure to play with you all. It's we been love wonderful. You, Becca. Not our first time. Be Be I know, Becca, you're the first. I, this is my first horror game, and you were my first horror GM, and I loved it. Oh, my. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me get to. Um, you know, torture you all and make you hurt each other, but with my love favorite and part. And you were like, I can't believe how much I'm enjoying your bad role. And then <laughs> I can believe it, Becca. <laughs> it's more the surprise on your faces and that I know I have to inflict pretend damage on you. <laughs> um, but only because I know it's not real uh, because I love you all very much. 
and love everybody at home. Thanks for oh. hanging out. That's it for us. Take care. Uh, stay away from uh, the dark ones that lurk in the night. And remember to return eggs to their mothers. Bye. <laughs>